Tommy weaves through, gets to the ball, and one play. Hi, this is Donald Tucker, the voice of the Harbor Wildcats. Are you looking for a new career? Would you like to become a professional truck driver? The CDL Training School in Tawnytown, Arkansas is open and accepting new students. You can earn your CDL in just three short weeks with employment after you finish school and Pam Transport will cover your tuition. You will train in the same equipment that you will drive once you earn your CDL. Plus, students also receive a $100 weekly stipend during training. Don't wait another minute. Call Pam Transport today at 888-498-2549. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Jared Park. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Hi, my name is Brett Hobbs. I'm the head football coach at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. Accidents are never planned, but no matter how small, every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas with fast access, pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. Goodbye, guessing. Hello, confidence. So long, stress. Hello, security. Farewell, running to the bank. Hello, banking from anywhere. Get a quick view of your balance. Lock lost debit cards and quickly deposit checks anywhere, anytime with a highly rated Arvest Go mobile app from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Sometimes a dream car has nothing to do with horsepower or performance. My dream car is the one that gets me to my job every day. The one that lets me help a friend in need. I didn't think I had the credit. My credit score wasn't that good. But CarMart believed in me. They believed in me. My dream car, a 2016 Nissan Sentra. What's yours? America's CarMart. You keep the dream, and we'll keep you on the road. I'm Jason Jones, principal at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I am Paul Gree, principal at Harbor High School. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. 
I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale School Athletics, I want to say thank you. Our Kansans appreciate community. We work and raise families, care for our neighbors, and come together in good times and bad. At First Security, that local strength is what we love best about our home state. There is commitment here, and heart, and hope. Thank you to everyone who is standing together, learning from one another, and making Arkansas a place we all love to call home. We're proud to be your community bank. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings, shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Hometown. That word still means something here. It means we're neighbors. We do the right thing. We care about your family, and you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps, hometown fresh. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Cassie Lloyd, the head volleyball coach at Harbor High School, and without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Brandi Davis, girls basketball coach at Central Junior High. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, Post to post, from downtown to way out of town, to connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected. Paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from our best bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Joe and Larry here with Sam's Furniture. We just wanted to thank you for your business and to let you know that your purchase helps serve so many people. That's right. The culture here at Sam's is to love and serve others in our community and around the globe. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many organizations we partner with. You enable us to invest in our children, teachers, veterans, development in Africa, and distributing wheelchairs to those in need around the world. You are a part of this. So from the Sam's Furniture family to yours, thank, thank you. you. I'm Don Struve. It's because of the generosity of people like you 
we are able to fully support the Fuel and Feed program. For this, we thank you and appreciate your help. I support Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Zach Arns, I'm voice of the Springdale Bulldogs. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh, delicious chicken. Food that is fresh, full of flavor, and all for a good cause can only come from Tacos for Life in Springdale. Enjoy delicious tacos for a cause. When you buy a meal, Tacos for Life donates the proceeds to provide a meal to starving children. Download the Tacos for Life app for ongoing promotions and free food for our friends right here in Springdale. Great food for a great cause. Tacos for Life, 1210 JTL Parkway in Springdale. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot. Because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise. To always keep it real. To always keep it Tyson. Hey Northwest Arkansas, Lara here at Sam's Furniture. If you're looking for new furniture, we have over 170,000 square feet selection at everyday low prices and same day delivery available. But the best part is that we love to serve our community. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many amazing organizations that we have been blessed to partner with. Serving others, especially those in need, is our culture here. And we hope that you'll be a part of that too. Arkansas's largest furniture destination, get it at Sam's. What's the only thing better than ordering your Whataburger favorites right on your phone? Earning free Whataburger while doing it. Download the Whataburger app to get started, just like you like it. Good evening and welcome to Springdale Athletic Foundation Television Network. I'm Connor Jenkins. Joining me alongside is Mr. Jared Park. Thank you for joining me. Hey, great to be here. Hey, already something a ma magical happening here at the barn, they're calling it. Um, little malfunction with the audio there. An anthem couldn't be played. And the Maverick ladies started singing it and the crowd joined in. Yes, it was a great sight. You like to see it. And then we look at, you talk about some great sights. Madison, or... Madison Campbell, the other night, look at it right here. 20.6 rebounds, 67% from three. She was a monster against the Heritage War Eagles. Yeah, I mean, she's trying to battle with sister on leading score. Yes, she is. And then Delaney Roller coming out hot 
Also, 22 points, two steals, two blocks, having a well-balanced performance against the War Eagles as well. Yeah, happened early, too. I mean, she was hot early. She set the pace for the Lady Wildcats. And got her 1,000-point club mark in that game as well. And you talk about another mark that we might be reaching is you talk about Coach Jenkins. And look at her career, 591 wins, two conference titles in the 6A West, and then two state championships at the 3A level. That's Coach Jenkins. She's, she's done it all. Legend. We knew it when we hired her, and she, she's continued it right here at Harbor. She has continued it very much so. As the Wildcats set to tip off, Maya Haney inserted into the starting lineup for the Wildcat squad. This is her first start of conference season and she will replace Lexa Fitzgerald in the starting lineup. Yeah, she's earned it. I mean, it started off in the Northside game and has continued the last two games after that. She has definitely earned her spot. She has been averaging a good mark for the Wildcats in conference play, almost eight points per game for them in conference play. And she's our toughness and she's our grit. She didn't mind getting in there, getting the hard rebounds, making the hard plays. As Mass Campbell will tip and she will get the tip. Don't know if that's legal, but they let it go as up top, McKinley Campbell getting double teamed, trying to send it over to MacArthur. She does. MacArthur driving inside, barreling inside for two. Does not get it. Madison Campbell with a rebound. Sends it back out. McKinley Campbell to up to good. McKinley Campbell struts up the scoring here tonight. And there we go, Madison. Early rebound. Madison Campbell is nothing but a good rebounder for this Wildcat squad. Just does it all for him as Tampa's with it. She's up top. Gets the screen. Inside Nyhaus, going up for two and gets it to fall. Sophia Nyhaus, or Sophia Nyhaus, yes, for two. Now MacArthur, they're doubling up top. Look to be in a 3-1-1, maybe? I don't, I don't know what that is. Delaney Roller with the three, doesn't get it to fall. Madison Campbell, another rebound. Sending it back out. And the three up, no good. My Haney for an attempted rebound. And that one fouled on Maya Haney. But that's her being active on the boards. And you'd like to see that early from her because that's what she's going to give us. Maya Haney and Madison Campbell active on the offensive rebounding tonight here for the Wildcats. Something a big factor for the Wildcats recently has been their offensive rebounds creating other possessions. As Laney Roller throwing it across for Jasmine MacArthur back out McKinley Campbell. She'll pull from three. Air ball, but Maya Haney almost had the rebound, but almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah. Hey, yeah, again, we, I'm with you. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing here on defense. Can't tell if it's a man or, or if it's a zone. It looks like both to me. Yes. Kind of throwing a little something at the Wildcats to get them off balance. Kind of rushed a few shots for the Wildcats so far. Trying to give the ball up or the Mavericks here in the barn. I like that. That's a 10-second count for the Wildcats. You don't see that a lot. No. I'm I was watching to see if he was counting. It seemed pretty quick, but, hey, that Wildcat pressure is showing off early. 2-2 two two our score, 6.32 left to play in the first period as Madison Campbell will inbound to her sister, McKinley Campbell, in the backcourt. Campbell coming across the timeline, now gets met with a double. She breaks the double, sends out MacArthur, wide open three, up, no good, back of the iron. McKinley Campbell tips it back out to MacArthur. Now out to Roller, she'll pull from three, and it's not good, no good, I should say. Madison Campbell with a rebound and found on the play. Madison Campbell will go to the line shooting two. Three rebounds here. We're only two minutes into this ball game. Already three rebounds for her. This is going to be a rebounding night, it already looks like, for this Wildcat team. They have gotten an offensive rebound in pretty much every single possession they've come down the floor in. As Madison Campbell will sink the first free throw, she's been red hot for this Wildcat team after her 20-point performance the other night. Red hot from three, too. I mean, she knocked down the three-point ball. She sinks that one as well. And she's got two points in the ball game. Wildcats going to apply some pressure here. The greatest form the Wildcats could be in is if they have Madison Campbell dropping 10-plus, McKinley Campbell dropping 10-plus, Delaney Roller dropping 10-plus, Jazz MacArthur. All four of them were in double digits against the Heritage War Eagles. Going inside and fouled is Ari Asabado. Asabado, maybe? Like that, Ari Asabado. The 
There you go, you called it. Acevedo at the line, shooting two. And she will sink the first. Wildcats doing a good job on the offensive boards here tonight so far. But the Mavericks are staying in it. Four to four, now our score, six minutes left to play in the first period. Kimley Campbell sending over Delaney Roller. All the way to MacArthur, she was wide open on the back side. Going up into it and good. Jazz MacArthur with the floater. She plays a whole lot bigger than her height. I'll tell you, love her effort. It's not about the size of the dog, it's about the size of the fight in the dog. And Madison, or Madison Campbell steals the ball right there. Jazz MacArthur for another layup and good. Press paying off for some easy buckets for the Wildcats here early. Just showing some tenacity early are the Wildcats. But this Mavericks team, while they might be near the bottom of the conference, are still a bigger team than the Wildcats are. Right. I mean, it was a tough ball game for us uh, at home with them early, uh, for sure in the first half of that first game. Yes. Cushing was not happy with that first half. I talked to her a lot about that game, and she was not happy with how they played in that game in the first half. Is that one maybe another steal? No, it stays with the Mavericks on their side of the floor. Tampa sends it to the corner. Stolen away by Kenley Campbell, but it will go out of bounds before she can handle it. Some of our plays here, we're up here in the penthouse at the barn right here, so we got some obscured views. Yeah, we're, we're missing a little bit of the sideline as Nyhaus gives it back. Three faked, now to the corner to Tampas. Tampas coming around the screen, sending it inside. Maya Haney with the steal. And McKinley Campbell coming the other way. Sends it all the way up to Madison Campbell, but could not connect on the pass. And that'll be out of bounds, and that'll go to the Mavericks. Right I did. Just led her a little too much. And, yes, it does look like Southside, Southside's doing a little 1-3-1. One, one. They're extending it all the way up here to the front court, which was, which was confusing me whether it was man to zone. As they throw it across the court, now Acevedo from three, no good. But that, I think, will be out of bounds. Should be Wildcat ball. No, oh. they're going to call it Maverick ball. So that should stay with the Southside Mavericks on their side. The pressure of the Wildcats, you can see, has, has Southside just a little jumpy, a little quick on their passes. You can tell the pressure is really getting to them early. Suggs back door. Now that's one stolen away by McKinley Campbell. She'll come the other way. Full speed. Gives it to Delaney Roller. She'll sidestep mid-range jumper. Good. As a coach, you hate him seeing going from three foot away, step back for eight. But if you make that shot, coach is never going to say anything. No, but you get subbed if you miss it. <laughs> that's the thing. As that'll send us. No, we're going to stay right here. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll stay right here and talk about it. As the Wildcats, while they might be outsized in this matchup, they're winning 10 to 4. They're also winning the board battle. Yeah, right. I mean, undeniably on the boards. They are just offensive rebounding yeah. the ball very well here tonight. And that's really where a lot of the boards have come. Defense rebounds are a given for them right now, but offensive rebounds have been a definite point for them. Turned into easy baskets, offensive boards getting put right back up for layups. And on the other end, they're getting a running game going with those defensive rebounds. Coaching is not making any adjustments. She likes how her lineup is playing here in the first four minutes. Trying to get the ball in now to Tampas. MacArthur defending. Tampas gets passed. Back to Tampas. She'll pull from three, and it rims out. Maya Haney with a tipped ball, and that should go to the Wildcats. I believe that's the Mavericks right there. I think oh, that was okay. Maya swatted that one. But again, good effort on the boards right there. As Suggs will inbound, gets it inside to Tampas. Tampas guarded by MacArthur. MacArthur's got that uh, rules, the ruling measure, the ruler out with the hand. As now Suggs trying to get it. McKinley Campbell on the floor with her, and that's a jump ball call. The possession arrow will favor the Mavericks. So Southside will have it on the baseline. Here in Fort Smith, Spring Atlantic Foundation bringing you all live event coverage no matter the location. As Nyhouse with it, sends it down low, and another jump ball will be called, and this time we all know who the possession arrow favors. 
Yeah, one thing you can't coach is speed, but what you can coach is how to use it. And that you've seen a big improvement from the Lady Wildcats this year using their speed to their advantage. Jasmine MacArthur trying to get inside to Maya Haney. Nyhouse with the steal. Suggs with it, sends it up to Tampas. Tampas going inside against McKinley Campbell. Losing the handle. Trying to get it back, does to Suggs. McKinley Campbell playing some good defense so far here tonight. Nyhouse going inside, sends it back out. Tampas, three up, three short. And MacArthur with a rebound, sending it to McKinley Campbell. The Wildcats playing at a very extreme pace right now as Madison Campbell pulls from three and good! Madison Campbell's on a scorcher right now for the Wildcats. Has continued it right over from the Heritage game the other night. She's got five points already, does Madison Campbell. And another jump ball call to position arrow. This time will favor the Mavericks as hey. Lexa Fitzgerald and Ioni Henry will step into the ball game. I hate to throw out the announcer's jinx, but what I love, McKinley Campbell using that speed, being aggressive, hasn't picked up those early fouls, which she tends to do. She does. And number 10, Kalia Preston. Defending, Tampa's with it. Getting the screen, Henry trying to hedge. Now Tampa's going inside against her, and that'll be out of bounds off the Wildcats. That'll stay with the Mavericks. It's hard to see. You almost need binoculars up here from our yes. bird's nest up here. As the Mavericks will inbound from the baseline. Getting inside, but a foul initially on the floor. That one assessed, I think, to Ioni Henry. No, on Delaney Roller. That is her first 13 foul. Ioni's had great minutes for the Wildcats for the last few games. Talk about a player that plays above her size. Ioni Henry stands at, I think, about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, she is just way bigger than that. As Delaney Roller going inside, spinning for a layup. Fitzgerald with the rebound back out. McKinley Campbell, wide open three. Couldn't get it. And the Mavericks have the rebound. Madison Campbell trying to force a trap, but that's going to be a foul on the floor on Madison Campbell. That's her second. So MacArthur will already go to the scores table. Back in the game for Harbor number five, Jasmine MacArthur. MacArthur already back in. She just sat for about a, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, came back into the ball game. Getting inside, but harassed by the Wildcats on the Mavericks, and that'll be another jump ball. That's, how many is that, four? Yeah, at least three. Four, four to three jump balls already here in this ball game. The Wildcats just doing a good job of getting on the 50-50 balls as they get the possession arrow that time. McKinley Campbell with it, sends it to the corner. Delaney Roller sees some space and can't knock it down. A lot of good rim there. That was a good looking shot. Looked like he was going to fall. That's now Tampa's with it. She's guarded by MacArthur. Wildcats kind of hedging hard on these screens. And now Fitzgerald with the steal, looking to push. Gives it up, Roller. She'll pull from transition three. No good. Fitzgerald with a rebound. Now McKinley Campbell fakes the three, and they're going to call a traveling violation on McKinley Campbell. Maya Haney will step into the ballgame. She'll replace Roller. Two quick rebounds right there for Alexa Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, I mean, there's the, there's the definition of glue guys. When you talk about some players, she's one of those. Yep. We talked about it last year. Jake Fontenopoulos was a glue guy. Alexa Fitzgerald is that. As now MacArthur defending against Suggs. Gets the screen. Ooh, that screen was a hard one. As Suggs coming around another one and a double dribble called on Suggs. Ioni Henry banged around a little right there. She looked like she was getting upset. She needs to keep her cool right here. As McKinley Campbell will run the one, spot, the one responsibilities here for the Wildcats. And MacArthur coming the other way. Tipped away. Recovered by McKinley Campbell. And a foul is called on the Southside Mavericks. Lydia Ann Adams. Not a bucket here in a while. 13 to 4 our score. My Haney the inbound gets inside McKinley Campbell. Now MacArthur. 
Going inside, Ione Henry. She'll put up the shot and foul on the play as Ione Henry. She'll go to the line, shooting two here for this Wildcat squad. Looked really confident when she got that ball inside there. She was taking it straight up with it. Henry with the first shot off the back of the iron. Henry has struggled from the free throw line this year, but has not struggled in other areas. Her defense has been superb for this Wildcat team. And again, she's one that's gonna get in there, bang. You wanna get tough and physical, you're gonna have to roll through number 24. Is that one missed? Maya Haney with an offensive rebound going up for the layup and good, and then one play for Maya Haney. Big time, that was a good move to get to the basket. She absorbed that hit right there and makes a nice shot off the glass. I know one of the things that the coaches, Coach Tarver, Coach Norman, Coach Jenkins have been preaching to Maya Haney is embrace the contact as she embraces it there and gets the three-point play. As Suggs will inbound. Gets it inside to Robinson. Back to Suggs as Tampas is on the bench. Subs, Suggs will run the one responsibility. McKinley Campbell picks her pocket, going for the layup and good. And here come the Wildcats. They put on a little bit of a spark for the five point run and that's gonna be a full timeout as we'll take a full timeout with them. We'll be right back here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television Network. Hi, this is Donald Tucker, the voice of the Harbor Wildcats. Are you looking for a new career? Would you like to become a professional truck driver? The CDL Training School in Tawnytown, Arkansas is open and accepting new students. You can earn your CDL in just three short weeks with employment after you finish school and PAM Transport will cover your tuition. You will train in the same equipment that you will drive once you earn your CDL. Plus, students also receive a $100 weekly stipend during training. Don't wait another minute. Call PAM Transport today at 888-498-254 welcome back here in the quarter we've got a little bit of time to go 18 to 4 our score a 14 point lead for the lady wildcats here in the first quarter and this is how you take care of business early on yeah i mean we, we haven't relinquished the press yet i mean they've just kept the heat on them i mean really you think a couple of our missed shots delaney makes one or two of those threes right there and this very easily could be a 24-4 ball game for sure, as now the Mavericks will inbound, most likely putting in a press offense here in that timeout. Kind of, yep, one of those football press offenses. As they get it inside to Tampas, she's guarded by Fitzgerald in the full court. They needed Tampas back in for the ball handling. They've got a few turnovers right there, so. Tampas has been their primary ball handler and has handled the pressure pretty well here tonight. Going inside of the Mavericks, putting up the shot and fouled on the play. That one, I think, is assessed to McKinley Campbell. Kayla Robinson going to go to the line to shoot two right here. McKinley Campbell will pick up her, I think that's her second. Or no, first. First. So not a lot of worries there yet for this Wildcat team. As the first free throw is missed. Nyhaus will come back into the ball game for the Mavericks. 54.3 left to play here in the first quarter. Beat me to it. I was about to say it right there. As that free throw made, 18 to five now our score as the Wildcats want the two for one possibility. As Tampas now a double team, McKinley Campbell handles it. Maya Haney inside, tipped out to MacArthur. MacArthur, McKinley Campbell to the corner to Fitzgerald. All the way back to MacArthur, she'll pull from three. Jasmine MacArthur, she's got seven in the ball game. As there was no two for one possibility right there, so the Wildcats tried for it at least. As MacArthur defending in the full court. Suggs trying to get past the half court line, she does. The pressure just getting to him right there. Again, here's our blind spot. We missed a little bit of that, I think but she Jasmine out of MacArthur um, created the turnover right there. Yep, Jazz MacArthur's defense is on point here tonight, her offense joining along her defense. She's got seven. McKinley Campbell inside Fitzgerald, back out to MacArthur. She fakes the pass, dribbled off a foot, and that'll stay with the Wildcats. They've got 9.2 left in the first quarter. Plenty of time to get a good shot right here. You can get the ball in, make a couple of passes, and try and get an easy, easy basket. Try to get the ball inside to MacArthur. They do. 
And that one almost stolen away, and it will be out of bounds off of MacArthur. So the Mavericks will now have it with 5.2. Wildcats going to look to steal the ball here. As Fitzgerald almost had it, didn't have long enough arms. Tampa's inside to Nyhouse for the layup, and good. And and one play for Sophia Nyhouse. It's a real good play by Michaela Tampas right there. She attacks the defender, made her come over, and made a great pass right there for an easy basket. Fitzgerald will pick up the foul. As Nyhouse will miss the free throw. Fitzgerald to MacArthur from full court from McKinley Campbell and hits the shot clock as that one wouldn't have counted either way. So that'll end our first quarter of action, 21 to seven. And before we go anywhere, this game brought to you by. Springville Athletic Foundation. Arkansas Children's Hospital. Core Architects. ESI. Ozarks Electric Cooperative. And Pam Transport. We'll send you to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television. Welcome back. The score 21 to 7 and fresh 8 on the second quarter clock as the Wildcats have the 14 point lead. As the Mavericks trying to get inside, they've been frustrated all night with getting the ball across the timeline. See, I have one bar of 5G. As that one is called, I don't know what was called there. I was kind of focused on the one bar of 5G. <laughs> Either way, it's a turnover for the Wildcat defense. Someone spoke into the nap mic, apparently. As MacArthur with it, looking to give it up, gives it up to Maya Haney. Now to McKinley Campbell. Over to MacArthur again. She'll weave through the defenders, put up the shot, and good. Jasmine MacArthur is on one tonight. Yeah, her shooting percentage is going to get high. She keeps making the baskets like that. They gave the points, I think, to Ione Henry, but that was definitely Jazz MacArthur. As Tampa's going inside, floater up, no good. Rebounds her own shot. Give it back out, the three up, and no good again by the Mavericks. But Tampa's another rebound. And now the Mavericks pull out. Give it up to Tampas again. She's guarded by Fitzgerald. Looking for something down low with Nyhouse. See, they keep passing it over there so they can get Nyhouse's positioning right. As McKinley Campbell gets a steal, the layup, and the good. So a 30-second timeout call by the Southside Mavericks will stay right here. And the story of that first quarter was really the, the rebounding by the Wildcats. Well, the rebounding and the pressure. The pressure for sure and it has kicked up a little bit right here mckinley campbell in the passing lanes at all times she's got six in the ball game macarthur with nine madison campbell with five we haven't seen madison campbell come back in the ball game with her two fouls yet but you got to imagine to get madison campbell back in that game it's going to be a lot of frustration by this mavericks team yeah and the mavericks look like they're at the quarter put put some substitutes in right there and we got a couple of really quick turnovers and you can see um looks like we're going to switch around a little more and really, well, the Mavericks, I feel a little bad for Michaela Tampa. She cannot come out of the ball game in this one. She yeah. is their best ball handler. She gets no rest in this game. She got a little breather. It's a fast-paced game. They took her out for just a couple of possessions, and both of those happened to be turnovers. So, yep, she right back in. But she has handled that pressure very well by this Wildcat defense. Yeah. 
They do the football offense again, or the press break, I should say, the football press break, as the Mavericks have it again. Trying to get backdoor action. MacArthur defending. Now Nyhouse. And they're going to call a push in the back on Maya Haney, which is probably an accurate call. Pretty obvious. I mean, even all the way up here in the, in the bird's nest, we can see that one. I think that is two fouls on Maya Haney. Foul on number 22. We'll hear it when they announce it. Maya Haney, first, second. Yep, second. First team foul in the second. Nyhouse inside for two and gets it to fall. Wow, a little acrobatic finish by Nyhouse. Yeah, the little, I don't know, hook shot floater. It was something as the Mavericks tip the ball out of bounds. That'll stay with the Wildcats on the sideline, the deep sideline. Almost where we can't see him. Campbell gets inside. Fitzgerald back to Campbell. Now out to MacArthur. MacArthur out to Roller. Roller sending it all the way. Fitzgerald finds her for the two. Hey, there's a little 1-3-1 one, one zone. That's the way you beat it. You kick, swing it from one side to the other, and usually that backdoor cutter is wide open. It's now Tampus breaking the press, going inside. Sends it inside. She's really been dishing. She hasn't looked to score that much. As now Fitzgerald coming across the timeline. One-on-one. -on -one. Gives it to Roller. Roller pulling up for jumper. Good. Hey, and that's our senior right there. I mean, she could have forced that basket right there. She did a nice little spin move and gave him for the easy lay-in for Delaney Roller. Some senior veteran experience for this Wildcat team, even though Fitzgerald hasn't played a year of varsity. This is her first year of varsity basketball, and she has excelled with her opportunity. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing that these Lady Wildcats do, and it really goes down to good coaching, is they play their role. Nobody's worried about, uh, you know, who's going to be the leading scorer, who's going to be the what. They do what they need to do as a team. As the Mavericks will inbound. Get inside to Nyhouse. Inside Nyhouse, another two. Good. Right now the Wildcats don't have an answer for Nyhouse. She's got four straight points. Over to Roller. Sends it to McKinley Campbell. Had a swing for Fitzgerald in the corner. Didn't take it. Now Roller takes the three and good. Delaney Roller has seven in the ball game now. And now Suggs. They've taken out Tampus, so the Wildcats going to turn up the pressure. Going inside, sending it back out. Three up, three. No good. Back of the iron. And McKinley Campbell with a rebound. Saves it to Fitzgerald. And gives it right back. McKinley Campbell gets up and just runs the point guard responsibilities for this cat team. As that one given up by the Wildcats. Going the other way is Suggs. Inside for two. No good. And Lexa Fitzgerald will pick up another foul. Hey, that's a good foul right there, though. Don't give up the easy layup right there. We've got a couple to give. Second personal on Alexa Fitzgerald, the third team foul. As Suggs will go to the line, shooting two. She will sink the first. I think Madison Campbell. I can't see. I mean, we're so far off. That's Madison Campbell who will come back into the ball game for the Wildcats. She's got two fouls, so going to have to watch herself a little bit here in the barn. And we need her. I mean, she's been hot, hot, hot shooting. As Suggs sinks the second. Making a 13 to 32 ball game with 4.25 left to play here in the second period. MacArthur hesitating, going inside, sending back out. Tipped away though, and the Mavericks get the steal. Going inside. Stolen away. Now Roller coming the other way. Pull up, mid range jumper, no good. Ioni Henry came in, but they're going to call a foul on her. That's an effort play. Even if you pick up the foul, that's an effort play. Yeah, that's showing her athleticism right there. She flew in, grabbed that ball with two hands. You know, that could have gone either way, I think. Second foul, or no, first foul on Ioni Henry. She'll step out of the ball game. Or no, MacArthur will. 
Jazzy, yeah, going to get a little rest right there. And Alexa back in for the Wildcats. Henry hasn't come out in a while. She's been in there. Banging for the Cats. As now Suggs with it going inside against McKinley Campbell. And that's one is just out of bounds, I think it's the call. I think she stepped on it before she threw it out. Or before she threw it back in. Kayla Tampas back into the ball game. She's over there breathing into that oxygen mask, and here she yes. comes right back. As McKinley Campbell brings it across the timeline, sees the potential double team, but then throws it away. Now Tampas against McKinley Campbell. Gets on the floor for it. Now Robinson going inside. Gets doubled. Adams. Out to Nyhouse, Ione Henry defending. Tampus trying to get it back to Nyhouse, they do, and another foul called. That one, if it goes to Madison Campbell, will be her third. Foul call on number 24. No, Ione Henry. So the Wildcats dodge a little bit of a bullet there, but still Ione Henry, who's been playing great minutes, gets her second foul. That's the first free throw good by Nyhouse. An, an effort right here by the Mavericks in the second quarter to get the ball um, inside. Sophia Nyhouse will miss a second. Rebounded by Adams. Back out Tampus. She'll pull from three. Gets it to fall. The Mavericks putting on a little bit of a scoring run here with Tampus and Nyhouse leading it. Now Madison Campbell sends it back to McKinley Campbell. Back over Roller. Driving inside, pull up with two on her, six it. I love that little floater she's got. It's consistent. Nine points in the game for Roller. Roller coming off a little bit of a tear of her own, had 22. The Missouri Southern State commit. As Nyhouse with it against Ione Henry. Going inside, sends it back out. Tampus back inside. They've been, like you said, very much trying to get it inside. And the jump ball call, the position arrow will favor the Wildcats. Position goes to Harper. Again, yeah, they're definitely trying to work it in there to Nyhouse. I mean, Nyhouse has her listed here at six foot. Wildcats' tallest player, I think, is listed at 5'7, five, 5'8. Five, Except for Haley Kerbo, who's 5'10, and Jasmine Rojas, but they don't get in the rotation as much. As that one tipped away by Nyhouse. And coming the other way are the Mavericks. Going inside, sending back out. Tampus three up. She just hit one. That one, no good. Fitzgerald with a rebound and a traveling violation called on Fitzgerald. Looked like it could have been a jump ball call. Back in the game to the jump ball or a foul, maybe, right there. Either way, it's a Maverick throw in. 2.05 left to play here in the first half. 34-17 our score. As Robinson will inbound. Trying to get inside, they do. And stolen away. Kimley Campbell with it. Sends it over Madison Campbell. She'll go up and in. Misses a shot though, and Acevedo with the rebound. She'll bring it across for the Mavericks. Going inside, full steam ahead. Now Tampus. McKinley Campbell defending. Tampus at five foot against the McKinley Campbell who says she's 5'5". Five five. And the three no good. Rebounded by Ani Henry. She says she's 5'5", five five, more like a little bit 5'4". Five 5'3", five maybe. As Delaney Roller pulls up. Traveling violation called. It was good defense right there by the Mavericks. Jasmine MacArthur will go to the scores table. The Wildcats have backed the press off a little bit early in the second period, but they're going to go ahead and pick it up full court again right here. Coach Jenkins giving a little talk to Delaney Roller as Tampus will bring the ball across. Tampus going inside, putting up the shot, and out of bounds, they're going to stay off of Fitzgerald. Yeah, good defense right there by Fitzgerald. Both hands up. She didn't reach and get that slapping foul. We didn't need her to pick up a third right here. No. Defense, 
Mavericks trying to get inside. They do to Tampa. She's now tiptoeing on the baseline. Guarded by Ani Henry. Now MacArthur defending against Acevedo. Now Tampas. Inside, tipped away by McKinley Campbell. Wonder if that counts as a deflection or a steal. As MacArthur up to Madison Campbell. The double team being threatened. Now Alexa Fitzgerald. She'll pull from mid-range, miss it. But Madison Campbell with a rebound. Sends it out MacArthur. MacArthur could have been fouled on the play. But no call. And they get it to Tampas. Look like MacArthur got a wings clip midair. As now Tampas with the ball. About a one to two second differential between shot clock and game clock as Tampas doesn't care. Goes up for the shot, no good. Fitzgerald with the rebound and the Wildcats will have the last shot if they please so. Over to McKinley Gamble. Now MacArthur, she'll pull from three. Doesn't get it. And tipped out of bounds, that will go to the Mavericks. Ooh, thought that might have been off the Maverick player right there. But here we go, the Wildcats gonna pick up with full court pressure right here with just 7.3 left to play. Now Suggs, she's just gonna wait out the clock. Yep, they're just gonna wait out the clock and that'll do it for the first half of action. 34-17 our score, the Wildcats lead by 17 going into the halftime break. We'll be right back here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television Network with third quarter action. Accidents are never planned, but no matter how small, every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas with fast access, pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. Goodbye, guessing. Hello, confidence. So long, stress. Hello, security. Farewell, running to the bank. Hello, banking from anywhere. Get a quick view of your balance, lock lost debit cards, and quickly deposit checks anywhere, anytime with the highly rated Arves Go mobile app from Arves Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Sometimes a dream car has nothing to do with horsepower or performance. My dream car is the one that gets me to my job every day. The one that lets me help a friend in need. I didn't think I had the credit. My credit score wasn't that good. But CarMart believed in me. They believed in me. My dream car, a 2016 Nissan Sentra. What's yours? America's CarMart. You keep the dream, and we'll keep you on the road. I'm Jason Jones, principal at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I am Paul Gray, principal at Harbor High School. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale School Athletics, I want to say thank you. Arkansans appreciate community. We work and raise families, care for our neighbors, and come together in good times and bad. At First Security, that local strength is what we love best about our home state. There is commitment here, and heart, and hope. 
Thank you to everyone who is standing together, learning from one another, and making Arkansas a place we all love to call home. We're proud to be your community bank. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand-breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings, shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Hometown, that word still means something here. It means we're neighbors, we do the right thing. We care about your family, and you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps, hometown fresh. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Cassie Lloyd, the head volleyball coach at Harbor High School, and without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Brandi Davis, girls basketball coach at Central Junior High. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feet program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, Post to post, from downtown to way out of town, to connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Joe and Larry here with Sam's Furniture. We just wanted to thank you for your business and to let you know that your purchase helps serve so many people. That's right. The culture here at Sam's is to love and serve others in our community and around the globe. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many organizations we partner with. You enable us to invest in our children, teachers, veterans, development in Africa, and distributing wheelchairs to those in need around the world. You are a part of this. So from the Sam's Furniture family to yours, thank, thank you. you. I'm Don Struby. It's because of the generosity of people like you, we are able to fully support the Fuel and Feed program. For this, we thank you and appreciate your help. I support Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Zach Arns, I'm voice of the Springdale Bulldogs. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feed program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, 
Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken tenders, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh. Delicious. Chicken. Food that is fresh, full of flavor, and all for a good cause can only come from Tacos for Life in Springdale. Enjoy delicious tacos for a cause. When you buy a meal, Tacos for Life donates the proceeds to provide a meal to starving children. Download the Tacos for Life app for ongoing promotions and free food for our friends right here in Springdale. Great food for a great cause. Tacos for Life, 1210 JTL Parkway in Springdale. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot. Because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise. To always keep it real. To always keep it Tyson. Hey Northwest Arkansas, Lara here at Sam's Furniture. If you're looking for new furniture, we have over 170,000 square feet selection at everyday low prices and same day delivery available. But the best part is that we love to serve our community. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many amazing organizations that we have been blessed to partner with. Serving others, especially those in need, is our culture here. And we hope that you'll be a part of that too. Arkansas's largest furniture destination, get it at Sam's. Good evening and welcome back to the Spring Dollar Athletic Foundation Television Network. 34-17, our score a 17-point lead for the Lady Wildcats with a fresh eight on the third quarter clock. And your sponsors bringing you this game are the Spring Dollar Athletic Foundation, Tyson Foods, McClarney Daniel. Harps Hometown Fresh. Our vest. And 5-H Sports Photography. As we get back into the action here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television. McKinley Campbell with it. Sends it back over. MacArthur over to Roller. Back out. That one thrown away though, and the, the Mavericks have it. Going inside is Tampus for two. No good. Rebounded by MacArthur, and MacArthur looking to push. Great defense by Jazzy right there. She did a great job of contesting that shot without picking up a foul. The Mavericks putting on the pressure here early with the double teams, is now that one stolen away again by Roller and MacArthur, but Roller was, I think, out of bounds. Stepped on the line right there. Hey, that was a big second quarter right there. 13 points, I think, for the Mavericks, and they look like they're bringing the momentum right in. As Suggs will inbound. Try to get it inside. Gets it inside to Nyhouse. Now going inside, still trying to swim it back to Nyhouse. That was a good pass. That was a really good pass right there by Felicity Suggs. Yeah, Suggs almost had that pass. Now inbounding, Suggs gets it inside, Acevedo, now Nighthouse with it, gives it up. Going inside is Robinson, puts up the shot, good. And one play. If that foul's charged to Jazzy MacArthur right there, that foul should be on the floor. As the Mavericks at the free throw line, we'll sink it. 20 to 34, now our score, a 14 point lead. To the corner, now Roller. Trying to get inside, throws it a little over the top and 
That's not Yao Ming. That's Madison Campbell. Coach Jenkins right there. She get, get, gonna get a timeout. Wildcats <laughs> looking a little sluggish and a little sloppy coming out of the locker room. Which is not normally the MO of the Wildcats. They normally come out and have a great tenacious third quarter, but they've come out a little, like you said, sluggish, and it's not really the MO that they normally take. She looks a little red faced, like she's whispering some sweet nothings over there. I love that. When you said that last time, I was like, I don't know what that means, and I kind of figured it out a little bit. But whispering a little sweet nothings is one of my favorite sayings of yours. Sure sounds better, and she's getting in their grill over there. Yes. It's definitely better than that. 34 20, still our score. 7 05, let's play here in the third quarter as the Mavericks will inbound. Yes, it looks like the Wildcats gonna pick up some full court pressure right here and swing the swing the momentum back to the Wildcats side. That's really what their story was at the first half, was putting on the pressure on the Mavericks and really rebounding the ball. If they can get back to those two fundamentals that they've been doing tonight, they can really make a good leeway and more of a lead. As Tampa's with it, she's handled the pressure all night for this Mavericks team. Now Robinson. Gets doubled, sends it back out, and she was out of bounds. That'll go the Wildcat way. With 6.48 left to go in the third. Campbell twins really putting on the pressure over there in the corner. That's the one place you don't want to dribble against these Wildcats is into a corner or the sideline. It's no man's land. As McKinley Campbell sends inside, Maya Haney, she'll go up for the shot, doesn't get fouled, puts it back up, doesn't get that one. And Madison Campbell with the rebound. Now MacArthur with it, and good. Jazzy MacArthur, as you call her, with the bucket. I like the jazzy. As a foul is called. Oh, no, 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 no. What was the call right there? Yeah, that's a foul right there on 21. 21, got it. Suggs like will pick up the foul. She tried to, to bulldoze her way through a screen right there. The Wildcats to inbound, get inside to Madison Campbell, now to McKinley Campbell. Swing it to MacArthur, three up three, no good. Rebounded by the Mavericks. Good ball moving by the Cats, just couldn't get the shot to fall. Now Suggs. Trying to get a backdoor pass, but Madison Campbell there for it. Sends it back out, McKinley Campbell. Now MacArthur going to push the pace. With a lead pass to McKinley Campbell. Going inside, now Maya Haney up for the two and good. Great pass right there. And a great job by Maya Haney. Stay right there in the spot and get you an easy basket. When you're in the dunker spot, you're going to have some success. The Wildcats having some success. Maya Haney having success with that this year. 38 to 20 now our score. 17 point lead at halftime, now 18. Suggs giving up Acevedo. Right now the Wildcat pressure has kicked up into a higher gear in the last few minutes. Acevato inside for two, doesn't get it. Roller with the rebound. And she's dribbling in the full court. Now Madison Campbell sends it up to McKinley Campbell. McKinley Campbell weaving through defenders, putting it up. Doesn't get it. Maya Haney with a rebound gets tipped away. And the Mavericks will come the other way with it. Almost back tipped by Maya Haney. And now Nyhouse sends it out. Deep three. Short. That was a deep three right there. as McKinley Campbell will bring the ball across the court to MacArthur. MacArthur gets doubled, gets stolen away. Could have been a blocking foul, but now inside Acevedo, blocked away, and a foul is called on Jazz MacArthur. Jazzy May could have undercut her right there and tried for the steal, but she decided to let her go by and try that block from behind. Most times when you try that block from behind, it's gonna be a foul. Acevedo at the line to shoot two here for the Mavericks. She'll make the first. 38-21, now our score 444 left to play in the third quarter. Lexa Fitzgerald signaled to sub in. As that one will be tipped out and will stay. I think, yeah, I think that's a good call right there. Fitzgerald to sub into the ball game. She'll replace MacArthur. Arthur with three fouls. That's the reason she's coming out of the game at this juncture. As Suggs will inbound. A little bit of a line set technically. I don't I don't know what that was, but 
Just trying to circle around and a shooter step in for Suggs. Now going up, blocked away by Maya Haney. And now Madison Campbell coming the other way with it. Sends it up. Roller tries to save it, doesn't. Saves it to the Mavericks. Is now Tampa's coming the other way. Going inside, weaving through, sending out Nyhouse from three, short. And now, now McKinley Campbell will bring it across. Nyhouse with a kind of surprising three for me right there. She's been their inside powerhouse. As Madison Campbell launches from three, can't get it, but rebounds her own shot. And a struggle on the floor, and a jump ball is called. I think that's timeout Wildcats. Oh, timeout Wildcats. There you go. Going to be a full. Going to be a full timeout. We'll take a full timeout with them. We'll be right back here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television Network. If you need that love, support, somebody to push you, to tell you you can do it, I would tell them to come to Planet Transportation. It's a family here. It's, it's not just a regular company. They will look after you. They will show you that you are important. You are welcome here. What's the only thing better than ordering your Whataburger favorites right on your phone? earning free Whataburger while doing it. Download the Whataburger app to get started, just like you like it. Welcome back, 38-21 our score. The Wildcats leading here in the barn, as they're calling it, at, against the Southside Mavericks. Four points apiece, both the Mavericks and us, four points here in the second half. Hadn't been quite as exciting as that first half was, and I believe that's why we've had a couple early timeouts by Coach Jenkins. Coach Jenkins burning some timeouts, trying to get her team playing to where they need to play as McKinley Campbell will inbound. Box set. They get inside Fitzgerald. Now Madison Campbell weaving through. Sending back out, all the way to Roller. She'll pull from three, doesn't get it. Madison Campbell with a rebound. Fakes out a player, goes up for the shot, doesn't matter, a foul on the floor against the Mavericks. Good job for her right there, giving a little pump fake. Unfortunately, she won't be at the line for that one. 3.55, let's play here in the third period. McKinley Campbell gets it in quick to Delaney Roller. Pull from three, no good, Maya Haney with a rebound. She'll go up for two. Doesn't get the foul called, and that'll stay with the Wildcats. They're going to get a lot of attempts at this one. Yeah. Hey, I like what she did there. She, somebody in her face, she just took it up strong. Not afraid to get her shot blocked, but just take it up strong. Screen for Madison Campbell. She's wide open from three-point territory and short. So the Wildcats go 0 for 3 on the three possessions on the baseline. As Tampa's coming the other way. Stopping at the three-point line. Kind of shook Fitzgerald for a second with Fitzgerald's back. Giving up Robinson. Now weaving through, going inside, putting up the shot, and Fitzgerald falls on the floor, and that'll be a foul, I think, on Fitzgerald, blocking foul. Yeah, she did a good job of sliding her feet right there, but it just wasn't quite fast enough. That's the third on Fitzgerald, as Ioni Henry triggered to come in. As that first free throw, no good. Henry and Weatherford will come into the ballgame. My Haney and Fitzgerald will take a seat. First look at Weatherford tonight. She had a good game against Heritage the other night. Took a charge. As that free throw good by Robinson. McKinley Campbell will bring it up, gives it up to Madison Campbell. Campbell kind of get me, I mean, they kind of threaten those double teams a lot to the Mavericks. That's their zone look, the 1 3 1. Sends it over, roller, wide open three. Up, no good. A rebound by McKinley Campbell, outside Madison Campbell. Weaving through, going inside, putting up the shot and a travel before the shot. One extra step right there. That was an accurate call. But hey, I like the idea. Aggressive taking it to the basket. Right now, Delaney Roller struggling from three here in the second half. But if we all know Delaney Roller, she'll get her stride back. Adams with it against Ioni Henry. She'll put up the shot, no good. Roller with a rebound. 
Gives it up, McKinley Campbell. Campbell weaving through. Oh, and charge drawn by the Mavericks. That's player control more than a charge right there. I think she just kind of lost her balance right there and, and banged into the defender. Wildcats going to kind of back off to about a half court pickup right here. McKinley Campbell picking up at the half court like you just said. Tampus is out of the game, so this is when the Wildcats have 10 to put on their pressure. Good hands right there by McKinley Campbell. I like the up swipe right there. You're not going to get as many fouls called when you up swipe as opposed to a down slap. Mavericks to inbound. Going inside is Adams. Putting up the shot blocked by Roller, but a foul is called. I don't know about that one. Foul call number 23 for Harvard Delaney. Coach Jenkins not real excited about that one. I don't believe Delaney thought that was a foul either. Number 12, Liddy and Adams. I think sometimes as a referee, you, you kind of blow that whistle and you, you say, ooh, maybe I should have blown that, but you can't go back on it. As the first free throw good. Thirty-eight, twenty-three, two seventeen left to go in the third quarter. Wildcats putting up sixty something in their last game. They put up sixty against Rogers Mounties. Put up sixty-nine, sixty-two, and then in this game it doesn't look like they're on pace for that. But they are holding Rogers or uh, the Southside Mavericks to a low number as well. Yeah, but we're only four points right here in the second half. We only got two oh eight left to play. As Delaney Roller from three short on that one as well. Acevedo going inside, putting up the shot, no good. Weatherford with the rebound, gives it up Madison Campbell. She'll look to push. Back out McKinley Campbell. She'll pull from three. Might have got tipped, but it doesn't matter. And McKinley Campbell knocks in the three-point play. Yeah, Acevedo with good pressure right there, but it didn't matter. Can't see. I think McKinley, yeah, McKinley Campbell has nine points. Didn't bring my stat sheet with me today, so... Not giving you as many accurate representations as that one steps out of bounds going the other way. Back into the Mavericks, number 11, Sophia Nyhaus. Nyhaus back in for the Mavericks right here. Maverick, or uh, Nyhaus, a very solid player here tonight. She's done a good job being a force inside. That's really what we've seen a lot of teams do against the Wildcats is just force it inside, try to get as many baskets as they can, point blank at the rim. As McKinley Campbell comes across half court, gives up Madison Campbell. Back to McKinley. Now Roller. Up to Madison Campbell. She'll pull from three again. Her, she has been the hot hand for this Wildcat team. She is not afraid to shoot it anymore. Yeah, I felt like we've settled for the three a little too much in the second half here, but with the last made ones, it feels okay. <laughs> as going inside is Robinson up for two and good. As now McKinley Campbell will bring it across. Now Roller trying to get inside Ioni Henry. She does. Ioni Henry goes up. Weatherford with the rebound. Sends it back out. Three up again for Roller. And it goes in. And the Wildcats, while they're settling from three, they're making it right now. Three in a row right there. Our last three baskets, baskets have been threes. It's raining threes here in the barn. 47-26. And now a 13-point quarter for the Wildcats. All magically happening in the past two minutes, maybe. Four seconds left. Oh, 24 seconds left. As that one's a five second count. The Wildcats haven't gotten many of those all year. Well, they probably should have gotten some of those. Cookie cake? I don't know. I think they said five second counts on the inbounds is definitely a cookie cake, but I don't know if they're going to give a cookie cake okay. for that one. They should. If you don't know that, Coach Jenkins made a deal with her team to give them a cookie cake every five second count they got on the inbounds. Which that's a lot of cookie cakes because they got three, I think, against Rogers Mounties. 12 seconds left here in the third quarter. Madison Campbell stepping in with confidence. And another three good. She's got 11 in the ball game. Four threes in a row for the Wildcats. 
as that will do it for the third quarter of action. What we were saying was a slow quarter and only four-point quarter turned into, let's do the math, 16-point quarter for the Wildcats, and they end with 50. So they are on pace a little bit now. Yeah. As that will do it for our third quarter of action. We'll be right back with our fourth quarter of action here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television. Accidents are never planned, but no matter how small, every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas with fast access, pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. Welcome back to the Springdale Athletic Foundation Television Network as we have the action here. And we have all action at Springdale Athletics. 50-26 to 26 our score, a 24-point lead for the Lady Wildcats, the biggest lead of the game as Tampa's now with it. Dribbling up top. Now she's kind of resetting the offense. Getting the screen from Nyhaus. Going inside, Madison Campbell kind of with a little bit of a push, at least from our angle and the ref's angle. That'll be a foul on Madison Campbell. But that's good. They're keeping the pressure up right here. They just need to keep this momentum going right here and finish this ball game off. Three fouls on Madison Campbell. She had two in the first quarter. So she has done a good job of staying out of that foul range. As off the butt of Ioni Henry and doesn't go. But a heads up play from Suggs. As McKinley Campbell pushing. Going inside. Pulling up. Good. McKinley Campbell makes it look effortless. Yeah. I could not do that. I can tell you that right now. But she did a great job of fading back off of that. She could have picked up a charge right there if she took one more step. As McKinley Campbell, a steal on the play. She's doing it on both ends. Going out. Madison Campbell. She'll pull from three again and gets it to fall. Madison Campbell. That's five threes in a row. And Madison Campbell has stepped into her own here for the Wildcats. She's got 14. How great news is that coming into the postseason? That's the best news you could hear, especially going into the next week with Fayetteville and Springdale. That's a that's a preview of the postseason, basically. Yeah. Springdale gave us a little business there at home, so we got a little something to get back on them next week over there at their place. By one point, the Springdale Bulldogs beat the Harbor Wildcats. As the Wildcat or the Mavericks, I should say, will inbound. They get it all the way over to Acevedo. Acevedo, maybe. Looking inside for Nyhouse, but Ioni Henry's doing a good job of a three-quarter front. Now Acevedo going inside for two and a blocking foul and one. That's right. I mean, that's what happens when you slide over and don't get those feet set right there. JC Weatherford will pick up the foul. Was the only player in the game without a foul. And now everybody on the court has a foul for the Wildcats as Acevedo knocks down the free throw. 29-55, our score. Madison Campbell with it. Dribbling up top. Sends it to the corner, Delaney Roller. She'll pull up. Doesn't get the and one. But will go to the baseline now for the Wildcats. Little reaching foul right there on Felicity Suggs. Roller to inbound, a box set here for the Wildcats. Gets inside Madison Campbell, now McKinley Campbell over to Roller, wide open, three up, and ends the streak. But at the same time, McKinley Campbell with a rebound. She'll put it back up for the Wildcats, and good! And right now, a little twin battle for leading scorer of the night. 15 for Matt, uh, McKinley Campbell, 14 for Madison Campbell. Or no, that's 13 for Madison Campbell, or McKinley Campbell, I should say. Going inside, Felicity Suggs. Now Tampus. Tampus being defended by Madison Campbell. Now inside, Ione Henry with a steal after 
after the good front. And now McKinley Campbell coming the other way. Sends it over Roller. Roller loses the handle of it, but Ioni Henry recovers. Now Roller. He's to send it to Madison Campbell. Eventually does. All the way to McKinley Campbell. Wide open three. Will it rain down here in Southside Mavericks? It will not. Delaney Roller from three again. And good. The Wildcats are living and dying by the three, and they're living right now here in the barn. That's Coach Jenkins calling for substitution. So corner three for Felicity Suggs. No good. Roller with a rebound. Coming the other way. Now Madison Campbell. Sends over McKinley Campbell. Over to Roller. Stepping through, Madison Campbell, wide open three. She'll pull again, back in the iron, no good. Rebounded by no one, out of bounds off the Wildcats. Great job there by JC to almost keep that ball alive. Wave seven here, we've got Kerbo, St Stovall, Annabelle Roller in the ball game. Claire Bond. Claire Bond and Jazzy yeah. MacArthur. There you go. 60 to 29. We didn't think it was going to get there, but the magic of the three has gotten the Wildcats from 38 all the way to 60 in a moment. As Tampa's with it, she's guarded by Stovall. Now inside, Haley Kerbo with the tip away and the steal. Now MacArthur, she'll lead this unit. Coming the other way, sends it over Roller. Annabelle Roller gets a stolen away and a traveling violation called on the Mavericks. And I love this right here because these aren't last minute subs right here. These are four minutes. This is going to be quality time, time with foul trouble and stuff. These girls are going to need some confidence heading into the playoffs. So I love these minutes for Kerbo, Bond, Stowall, and Roller. Good minutes here for the Wildcat squad. As Stowall with it gets doubled and will be pushed out of bounds. That was a, called a foul. foul only the second team foul there for the Mavericks, who we got a ways to go before anybody's going to go to that bonus. Odin picks up the foul. Tabby Wilkes, about seven of the ball game. She will. She'll come in for MacArthur. And I think that's pretty much everybody. Almost, almost. We're a few away. Yeah, and we're at the mercy rule, so the clock is rolling nonstop now. As Annabelle Roller with it, tries to give it up to Bond and doesn't. That's tipped out by the Mavericks. Tampa's still working hard, I'll tell you. I don't know how here in the fourth quarter because she has been run ragged by this Wildcat defense. She has been harassed all night. As a Wildcats will inbound, now to Stovall. Getting doubled. Sends it back out, Wilkes. Over to Bond. Back to Stovall. Threatening that double team again. Steps through and travels. Hmm. Stovall keeps keeps dribbling into the double team right there. This created by the 1-3-1 zone. She's got to learn to pass that around. Mavericks to inbound. And then Stovall with some great defense right here. Almost back tipped it. Now a three up three, no good. Rebounded by Kerbo. And Stovall with it. Stovall beating that 1 3 1 again. Sends it over a roller, tipped away by the Mavericks, and that'll stay with the Wildcats. 150 left to play here in the ball game. Again, that clock's going to keep on running. Get inside to Bond. Back to Roller. She'll pull from three. Good. Everybody's feasting tonight from three. Annabelle Roller taking a little page from her sister's book. Stovall getting a little excited right there. Like to see these hustle minutes. Sophia Rubio Monk comes into the ball game. Just a newly minted varsity member. 63 29, a minute and six left to play here in the fourth quarter. Sending out. Here are the Mavericks. 
Claire Baum may be picking up a five second call here. Very close to it. Stolen away. Monk has it. And now Stovall sends over Roller. Inside, Rubio Monk. Tries to send it out, stolen away by Julia Suggs. Monk almost got the steal. Now Roller defending, 20 seconds left on the clock. And that one called a foul. A uh, little bell out there. I thought she did a great job of moving her feet and keeping those hands up. It looked like the offense created that contact to me. That should be, oh, they're going to stop the clock. So the Wildcats will have the opportunity to dribble it out. That's the first free throw is good. 63-30, our score. Wildcats putting up 60 again for the third time in a row. And that one missed, rebounded by the Mavericks. They'll put up another shot, no good. And out of bounds, and that will do it. 63-30, your final score, a 33-point lead, or win, I should say, for the Lady Wildcats. Yeah, it was a rough night for them. It looked like at moments we were a little bit flat, come out of the locker room flat, which is not a bit you know what the Wildcats usually do, usually they're going to come out with a game plan and they're going to put it right on. But the three-point basket seemed to save them there. Saved. I mean, you always say that saying, live and die by the three. They lived by it tonight. They didn't die by it. Yeah. And it really saved them from a what could have been a 14-12 to 12 point win turned into a 33-point win. Yeah. As that'll do it for our first game of action. Don't go anywhere. We've got men's action right here. But up next for this Wildcat team this next Tuesday is the Fayetteville Bulldogs. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah, exciting. Both the girls and the boys games going to be a real big matchup for both of them. Especially standings wise. As we will send it to a quick commercial break, we'll be right back here. Oh, nope, oh, some sponsors real quick. Springfield Athletic Foundation. Slim Chickens. Trade Pro. United Federal Credit Union. Tacos for Life. Storms and Sudorsky Orthodontics. As we'll send it to a quick commercial break, we'll be right back here with men's action after this quick commercial break. Goodbye, guessing. Hello, confidence. So long, stress. Hello, security. Farewell, running to the bank. Hello, banking from anywhere. Get a quick view of your balance. Lock lost debit cards and quickly deposit checks anywhere, anytime with a highly rated Arvest Go mobile app from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Sometimes a dream car has nothing to do with horsepower or performance. My dream car is the one that gets me to my job every day. The one that lets me help a friend in need. I didn't think I had the credit. My credit score wasn't that good. But CarMart believed in me. They believed in me. My dream car, a 2016 Nissan Sentra. What's yours? America's CarMart. You keep the dream, and we'll keep you on the road. I'm Jason Jones, principal at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I am Paul Gree, principal at Harbor High School. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. 
I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale School Athletics, I want to say thank you. Arkansans appreciate community. We work and raise families, care for our neighbors, and come together in good times and bad. At First Security, that local strength is what we love best about our home state. There is commitment here, and heart, and hope. Thank you to everyone who is standing together, learning from one another, and making Arkansas a place we all love to call home. We're proud to be your community bank. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings, shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Hometown. That word still means something here. It means we're neighbors. We do the right thing. We care about your family, and you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps, hometown fresh. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Cassie Lloyd, the head volleyball coach at Harbor High School, and without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Brandi Davis, girls basketball coach at Central Junior High. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feet program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, Post to post, from downtown to way out of town, to connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Joe and Larry here with Sam's Furniture. We just wanted to thank you for your business and to let you know that your purchase helps serve so many people. That's right. The culture here at Sam's is to love and serve others in our community and around the globe. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many organizations we partner with. You enable us to invest in our children, teachers, veterans, development in Africa, and distributing wheelchairs to those in need around the world. You are a part of this. So from the Sam's Furniture family to yours, thank, thank you. you. I'm Don Struving. It's because of the generosity of people like you 
we are able to fully support the Fuel and Feed program. For this, we thank you and appreciate your help. I support Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Zach Arns, I'm voice of the Springdale Bulldogs. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh. Delicious. Chicken. Food that is fresh, full of flavor, and all for a good cause can only come from Tacos for Life in Springdale. Enjoy delicious tacos for a cause. When you buy a meal, Tacos for Life donates the proceeds to provide a meal to starving children. Download the Tacos for Life app for ongoing promotions and free food for our friends right here in Springdale. Great food for a great cause. Tacos for Life, 1210 JTL Parkway in Springdale. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot. Because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise. To always keep it real. To always keep it Tyson. Hey Northwest Arkansas, Lara here at Sam's Furniture. If you're looking for new furniture, we have over 170,000 square feet selection at everyday low prices and same day delivery available. But the best part is that we love to serve our community. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many amazing organizations that we have been blessed to partner with. Serving others, especially those in need, is our culture here. And we hope that you'll be a part of that too. Arkansas's largest furniture destination, get it at Sam's. My name is Eric Burnett. I am the Assistant Athletic Director for the Springdale School District. I am so grateful for your donations to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Chris Wood, Assistant Athletic Director of the Springdale School District. It's because of the generosity of people like you, we are able to fully support the Fuel and Feet program. For this, we thank you and appreciate your help. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. If you need that love, support, somebody to push you, to tell you you can do it, I would tell them to come to Pam Transportation. It's a family here. It's, it's not just a regular company. They will look after you. They will show you that you are important. You are welcome here. What's the only thing better than ordering your Whataburger favorites right on your phone? Earning free Whataburger while doing it. Download the Whataburger app to get started, just like you like it. Jackson Colby, we through, gets to the ball, and one play!
Hi, this is Donald Tucker, the voice of the Harbor Wildcats. Are you looking for a new career? Would you like to become a professional truck driver? The CDL Training School in Tawnytown, Arkansas is open and accepting new students. You can earn your CDL in just three short weeks with employment. After you finish school, Pam Transport will cover your tuition. You will train in the same equipment that you will drive once you earn your CDL. Plus, students also receive a $100 weekly stipend during training. Don't wait another minute. Call Pam Transport today at 888-498-2549. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Jared Park. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Hi, my name is Brett Hobbs. I'm the head football coach at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. Accidents are never planned, but no matter how small, every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas with fast access, pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. by guessing. Hello, confidence. So long, stress. Hello, security. Farewell, running to the bank. Hello, banking from anywhere. Get a quick view of your balance. Lock lost debit cards and quickly deposit checks anywhere, anytime with a highly rated Arvest Go mobile app from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Sometimes a dream car has nothing to do with horsepower or performance. My dream car is the one that gets me to my job every day. The one that lets me help a friend in need. I didn't think I had the credit. My credit score wasn't that good. But CarMart believed in me. They believed in me. My dream car, a 2016 Nissan Sentra. What's yours? America's CarMart. You keep the dream, and we'll keep you on the road. I'm Jason Jones, principal at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. 
I am Paul Gree, principal at Harbor High School. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale School Athletics, I want to say thank you. Arkansans appreciate community. We work and raise families, care for our neighbors, and come together in good times and bad. At First Security, that local strength is what we love best about our home state. There is commitment here, and heart, and hope. Thank you to everyone who is standing together, learning from one another, and making Arkansas a place we all love to call home. We're proud to be your community bank. Welcome back, and the last story of last game was Cortland Muldrew. He had 23 in the first quarter. He had 30 points in the game, shot 43% in from three-point territory. Then you look at Jackson Conley having a great game as well. Um, Jackson Conley scoring 18 points, six rebounds, two steals, doing what he does on the defensive end for this Wildcat team. And then we look at Coach Deffenbaugh. Coach Deffenbaugh is he's a stud. He's only been a the Wildcat for so long. He's got 103 wins, one conference title a while ago, and two Coaches of the Year honors. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a good job. Like you said, hadn't been here a long time, but he's been doing great things at the, for the time he's been here. You just coached up by those two players as well. Give us your thoughts on those performances. You were announcing the game down low. Yeah, I mean, it was a takeover performance right there. Um, our Wildcats are at their best, I feel like, though, when, that's, when we're sh sharing the love a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it was incredible to watch that first quarter for Maldrew. That's a that's a big boy ball game right there. It was, and 23 in the first quarter is a remarkable feat to score. I mean, he he was getting to the basket with ease. Right. I mean, that's on pace for a 92 point ball game. <laughs> yeah, it is. That is on pace. For, I mean, good math right there. I'll give you some credit. That was some good math. As we'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with the starting lineups here on the Springdale Public Foundation Television Network. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand-breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings. Shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Hometown. That word still means something here. It means we're neighbors. We do the right thing. We care about your family, and you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps, hometown fresh. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, Post to post, from downtown to way out of town, to connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected.
Welcome back to the second header of our double action here tonight in Southside Maverick Arena, or as they're calling it, the barn, as the Wildcats take on the Southside Mavericks. And this should be a fun one here tonight. Yeah, exciting. I mean, this gym is amazing. I'll tell you, every time you walk in here, how about a four-sided jumbotron? I mean, this is amazing. This is a nice, very nice gym. This is a good kind of preparation game for the Wildcats. I got to go on against the Fayetteville Bulldogs next week as the Mavericks win the tip. Hayden Wood with the tip off tonight. Trey Grant with it, sends it back court. Marley racing to get it, going up for two. And Hayden Wood with the putback. Ooh, I thought he might get that one off the rim and stick it back. 2-2-1 two, two, press as the Mavericks beat it. Now give him back. Cooper Watson. Roper, come around the screen, pull from three, off the back of the iron, no good, and Wood will push the pace. Now Conley down low, Bledsaw, Bledsaw up and good. Wildcats looking to play fast right now here in the barn. Hey, two passes went the length of the court right there for easy layup right there for Bledsaw. Given up. Now Watson, inside Harold for two. That's a good little shot there because it was deflected a little bit right there and he still muscled it up there and got the lay in. Muldrew going inside for two, puts it up, doesn't get the shot, but will be fouled on the play and he'll get two free throws at the line. Cooper Watson going to pick up his first foul right here. 6.52 left to play in the first quarter, 4-2 to two our score. Muldrew just almost automatic money from the line too at 88% in conference. As Muldrew sinks the pair. Six to two, our score. They get it inside. Trey Grant with the ball. Grant at 5-9. Wood almost with a steal, now Roper. Roper coming around the screen. Triggered it last time. Watson against Wood. Pulls from three. No good, rebounded by Conley, and Conley will come the other way. Again, looking to push on the Wildcats. Marley going inside, pull up, mid-range jumper, no good. Wood almost with a rebound. Instead, it goes to Sullivan. And now Watson, who has had the ball in his hands pretty much every single possession for the Mavericks, will have the ball. Watson over to the corner, wide open three for Harold. Good. And Harold's the one with all five of the points for the Mavericks. Yeah, that was a good looking three point shot. And hey, same story as it was when we were at home. They got off to a fast start. Southside did. Muldrew trying to answer with a three, doesn't get it. Conley with a rebound, puts it back up, no good. And rebounded by the Mavericks as Watson now with it. Watson against Conley, gives it up, Harold. Harold pulling from three, a quick trigger, no good. Conley with the rebound. Pushing the pace, going inside, Marley. Back outside, Bledsaw. Out to Cortland. Now Conley, three, up three, no good. Rebounded by Watson. Watson pushing the pace, giving it up, Sullivan. Good. The pace kind of matching right here. Yeah, the Wildcats a little lazy getting back right there. Mavericks making him pay for it. Muldrew gives it to Wood. Wood pulling from three from deep three te point territory. Hayden Wood. Like to see that early. That's exciting. 
as in the words of Coach Daffemont, we said this quote a lot on the live stream, but if you've got an aggressive Conley on defense and aggressive Wood on offense, you're going to have a successful night. And Wood looks to be a little more aggressive than usual with that three-point opportunity. Yeah, five points early for him right here. Got the easy put back and a three-point basket. 7-9, our score. The Wildcats up by two. That's Trey Grant with the ball. Grant gives it up to Watson. Watson against Wood. Wood taking on the tough assignment here tonight. Now Grant spinning out, giving it up to Sullivan. Now Roper. Roper. Going inside, putting up the shot. No, gives it to Sullivan instead for the floater. No good. Mulder with a rebound. And he'll keep it for the Cats. Sends inside Wood. Pump fake. Conley. Back out Muldrew. Going inside. Sending back out Conley. Conley with a spin. The pull up. No good. Rebounded by Bledsaw. Back out Muldrew. Over to Wood. Wood fakes a three. Going inside. Pull up. Mid range jumper. No good. And the Mavericks have the ball. A series of events for the Wildcats not ending in a bucket. Now Watson. Backdoor Roper. Stolen away. He's going up and down right now. Yeah. Both teams trying to settle down and find themselves right here. Won't take long, both these teams. Now Wood. Facing up. Putting on the spin. Putting up the scoop. And good. Hayden Wood. Seven points already for this Wildcat squad. Matching the Mavericks total points. Yeah. Love to see this hot start right here from, from Hayden. Trey Grant with it. Guarded by Marley. Grant over to Watson. Down low. Sullivan puts it up. Foul is called. Ooh, that was a late whistle right there. As Sullivan will go to line, shooting two. That foul going to be on Cortland Muldrew. I think it's funny. Every time we go somewhere, they call him Mul Muldrew. Yeah. Jabron Sullivan's at the line, shooting two here for the Mavericks. As Sullivan will sink the first. Fast pace up and down right here. I mean, not a whole lot of points scored right here for as fast as they've been getting up and down the court, it doesn't seem like. You would be correct in that assessment as Sullivan sinks the pair. 9-11, to 11, our score, 308 left to play in the first period. It has gone kind of a faster pace, obviously, and it's been a faster ball game than we were seeing in that previous game with the Lady Wildcats. A lot more whistles in that Lady Wildcat game. Now Wood with it, faking the three, dribbling down low, giving it to Bledsaw. Dunk time, Bledsaw. And this team's electrifying. You give one of these guys a good pass, and they're going to give a big slam jam finish. As Roper with it. He's guarded by Muldrew. Three against three. Now Harrell going inside. Sending back out Roper. Roper to Watson. Watson gets Conley on the bite. And we'll go to the line, shooting two. We're getting help defense from the backside from the Wildcats, and the Mavericks doing a great job of making that backside pass. Cooper Watson standing at 6'6". He's listed as a forward, and kind of a veteran move right there by the senior. Yeah, that was a big time. As he sinks the first free throw. The Wildcats, you know, just looking out there across the floor, just have a distinct height advantage out there. Especially at the guard position. Yeah. I mean, you've got Roper at 5'9", Trey Grant at 5'9", as a rebound good by Roper, but no shot good as Muldrew comes the other way. Muldrew standing about 6'3", Conley about 6'5", as Bledsaw goes up for two and gets it to fall. There we go, Bledsaw six points right here early. Again, I love the Wildcats when they're playing that kind of basketball right there. As Grant with it. Giving it up, now Roper. Back to Harrell. Harrell. Oh, I thought he was going to take that one. Now Grant. Sends it out. Conley almost with the steal, but Watson maintains. Inside Harrell. Wow. That's a big time pass right there by Cooper Watson. I mean, that right there. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. That was a good one. I like that. I, I might steal that right there. Dun -dun -dun. I like it. Conley with it. Sitting inside Wood. Wood pulling from mid range. Gets it to fall. Hayden Wood. Nine points early here for this Wildcat team. 
He can score. If you didn't know that already, he can score. He averages nine points per game in conference play. He's already met that average here tonight in the first quarter. Now Grant trying to give it up to Roper. He does. Wood switched on to him, and a foul is called on Wood. A little blocking foul. And Maldrew, I mean, two points tonight, but we're seeing blocks on an end. We're seeing great defense from him and a couple of really great passes from him. Watson to inbound. Gets inside to Harrell and lost Conley with the steal, and Conley will come the other way at full speed. Going up for two, doesn't get it, tries to tip it back in, and that's rebounded by the Mavericks. Now Roper. Alex Roper showing some hops there. I mean, he got up over Conley right there for that rebound. Harrell from three. No good, rebounded by no one going the Wildcat way. Harrell thought that one looked good. He shot that one already taking about five steps backwards. Hits the front of the rim. No rebounding in there for the Mavericks. As Muldrew will bring the ball across the timeline. 50 seconds left to play in the first quarter. 17 to 12 our score as Muldrew with the ball. Gives it up Conley. Wood has been the answer kind of inside that zone. Back to Wood. Fakes from three and they're going to call a traveling violation on Wood. Yep, he couldn't decide. He wanted that three right there, and the defense closed, so he took it to the hole and just forgot to dribble first. See kind of the coaching staff of the Coach Deffenbaugh just wearing all the gray, the gray pull up, or pullovers. I like it. Yeah. Hey, how about this fast right here? The girls' game seems so slow. It seemed like it went on forever. We're 25 seconds away from this first quarter being over. And they started it very late. I mean, we're supposed to start these games at 7.30. It's already 8.05. Had a little celebration right there, and I get it. You know, for the Southside Cheerleaders, number one in the nation. Highest score recorded down there, I heard. We got to see their performance on the Jumbotrons. As Watson will inbound. Trying to get it inside. Wildcats doing a good job. The, maybe not too much picking of the arm for the time of the five-second count, but it didn't get called. As Prince with it. He's holding for the last shot. Watson sets the screen, get the double team. Now Harrell, Harrell with it against Menifee. Sends it over. Pull around, Sullivan no good. And that'll do it for first quarter of action. 17 to 12, our score, a five point lead. For the Wildcats to end the first quarter of action, we'll be right back here on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television. By paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home. Connect with a personal banker and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from our best bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Welcome back. The score is 17 to 12. Five point lead for the Wildcats with the fresh eight on the second quarter clock as the Wildcats will have the ball going the same way they've been going. Finally got our first sub in, the Mavericks. Wildcats staying with their lineup. Looks like we've got a new player in for the Mavericks, Lee Prince. As Mulder sends it to the corner to Conley. Conley inside Wood, almost pulled around for the shot. Doesn't get it though. Goes up again, doesn't get that one. Rebounds his own shot again. as he will foul Watson. Frustration foul by Wood. Probably so in a reaction there from Watson too. I mean, you gotta watch throwing those elbows. Contact, contact was created on both sides in that situation. Right. Usually the second guy's the guy that gets called though. 
as Prince with it. Trying to give it to Watson against Wood, going inside, putting up the shot, and good. Against good defense right there, Hayden Wood with good defense. That was just a better shot. Sometimes offense can outwin defense. As Muldrew with it, sends it to Conley. Wood sends it to Muldrew. Good pass, good shot, finish. And that's exactly what the play is written up to be. Right. That inside outside. And Wood has been the answer here right. for the Wildcats, whether it be passing like he just did or scoring in that kind of short, not short corner, uh, elbow extended area. As Marley with the steal coming the other way. Gives it up Conley. Now to Muldrew. Muldrew. Three. Up. Three. Good. Rattles around and in. Shooter's touch right there. With the jab step, Corlin Muldrew just kind of created enough space to get a shot off and got the shot to fall. As Roper coming the other way, harassed by Muldrew. Now Harold going inside, sending back out Sullivan. Now Prince. Three. Up. Three. Does not fall as Bledsaw with the rebound. Bledsaw having a really good ball game tonight. Points, rebounds, defense. Muldrew over to Wood. Wood, deep three, up three. Good! Hayden Wood is having a night. 12, 12 points already. Yeah, 12 points. And just like that, Muldrew's up to eight with a couple of threes right there. And, hey, maybe this is a something that's going on for the Wildcats here in the barn is three-point shooting. Three-point shooting definitely working out. But also, you got to think, Corlin Muldrew is sharing the ball pretty well right now. He could have maybe on the double-double track here tonight. Yeah. As we give it to our sponsors. Springdale Athletic Foundation. Tyson Foods. McClarty Daniel. Harps Hometown Fresh. Our vest. 5H Sports Photography as we get the ball in play and we're ready to go. Roper with it. Now Watson. Now a 2-3 zone for this Wildcat team. Harrell dribbling in, down to Sullivan. It's kind of what you got to do against a 2-3 zone. Dribble into it, find the holes. As the Southside Mavericks get into kind of a zone look, or zone offense look. Harrell from three. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. As Bledsaw with a rebound, another rebound for Bledsaw. Conley coming the other way. Now Marley. Marley faking. Mid-range pull up, no good. Bledsaw really settling into his own as a starter here for the Wildcats. Conley almost with the steal. Now to the corner to Harrell. Three up three, no good. Muldrew with a rebound. Coming the other way is Muldrew. Sends it down low. Wood, and I didn't even see Wood. I didn't see Wood right there. Wow, Hayden Wood with 14 in the ball game. Finally, the Wildcats right here are gonna make their first sub with Menifee. I mean, this is some good team basketball being played by the Wildcats right now. Some balanced scoring approach that we, we don't normally see. Yeah, hey, and this is gonna pay off huge. If we get everybody playing with confidence going in, all starting five, this team's gonna be hard to beat. I mean, what I mean by that is normally it's a little more concentrated with Conley and Muldrew taking on the scoring load but right now it's kind of everybody taking on that scoring load. And again, Menifee's gonna be in for the Wildcats. First sub of the night. Means Marley's gonna get a little rest over there. And Bledsaw, yeah. I mean, after, you know, four or five starts now, maybe six, really coming into his own. After the loss of Jabari Washington, he will not be back this season, but he is only a sophomore, so he will be back next year for the Wildcats as Roper coming away with it. Now Haskins gonna go to the scores table. Prince with it. Gives it up, Harrell. Harrell against Menifee. Now Sullivan. The Mavericks kinda playing up right now. They're not going north and south, kinda going east and west with the ball. Is now Prince getting downhill. Sending back out Sullivan. Back to Prince. Now a double team, and that's a shot clock violation. The Mavericks were not aware. Hey, and that was a great job by Hayden Wood to stay on his feet right there. He didn't buy that fake, and that's what caused that. He had to make an extra pass right there. Turnover. Bledsaw will come out of the game and get a quick breather as Peyton Haskins will sub in for him. 
Muldrew will bring, nope, Wood will bring it across. Now to Muldrew. Gives it up Conley. Now to Wood. A lob play for Muldrew, catches it, puts it up, and is fouled on the play. He, he lulled him to sleep a little bit, but just couldn't get the lob to work. I like that coming right, right out of the of a throw-in right there, and you could tell executed a real good play right there for the backdoor alley-oop. It just didn't quite go down. As Muldrew, you mentioned his percentage earlier, a very high percentage above 80% for the Wildcats. Trey Grant back into the game, replacing Prince. We've only seen the Mavericks go six deep. The Wildcats gone seven. As Grant with it. Muldrew clapping, he's ready to go. Watson with it. Sends it inside of the press to Roper. Now Grant. Back to Roper. You didn't even see the ref counting the 10 second call right there. Felt like we were in that end a long time. Back to Grant. Kind of dribbling up top, gives it inside to Sullivan. Now corner, Harrell three. He shot a lot of those tonight. Watson with the rebound. Going back up, puts on the move. Haskins with the foul. And that'll be two free throws for Watson. Foul call on number 23 for the Wildcats. Haskins, Haskins pits up the foul there, but that's a good job getting body on body. A little oversized right there by Watson, but it's still a hard, good hard play right there. First free throw good by Watson, making it 15 to 30. 351 left to go in the second quarter. This one slowed down a little bit more. Yeah. As Watson will sink it. And a timeout called by the Southside Mavericks. That's gonna be a full timeout. We'll take a full timeout with them. We'll be right back here on the Spring Dog Athletic Foundation Television Network. Joe and Larry here with Sam's Furniture. We just wanted to thank you for your business and to let you know that your purchase helps serve so many people. That's right. The culture here at Sam's is to love and serve others in our community and around the globe. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many organizations we partner with. You enable us to invest in our children, teachers, veterans, development in Africa, and distributing wheelchairs to those in need around the world. You are a part of this. So from the Sam's Furniture family to yours, thank, thank you. you. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh. Delicious. Chicken. Welcome back, 30 to 16 our score. A 14 point lead for the Wildcats here in Southside Maverick Arena. I lost Wood and Conley for a second, they were on the other end. <laughs> Could not find them. As now Conley will run the one responsibilities for the Wildcats. Feels like a closer ball game than 14 points. It does. But that just shows you the execution of the Wildcats tonight is on point. Menifee with it, gives it up Muldrew. Muldrew putting on the jabs. Step back, going inside, putting up the shot, blocked away, and a foul is called. Taking it in there to the double team, but taking it strong, and that's what's gonna get you a shot or get you down on the line. And again, we love him at the line, it's money. It's, yes, him at the line is a very good chance of it going in. As that one goes in for the Wildcats, Marley, and some early minutes here for TD Mosby. That's an interesting substitution. Yeah, like I mean, like I said, we're going to have to go to that bench if we, you know, we're going to carry games into the playoffs. So I love this from the Wildcats. TD Mosby played in the JV game earlier. Wonder how many quarters he has in this one. We well, need to get five quarters. So yes. As Watson goes inside for two, and now Jackson Conley coming the other way quickly. Going inside, knocking down Watson, charge drawn, and kind of lowered the shoulder on that one. Yeah, but the feet were moving, you know. I mean, you think the offense has the right to the basket. 
Always easy for me with my amber glasses on. You know, I always see it kind of leaning towards the Wildcats, I know. Second foul on Jackson Conley. He'll sub out of the ball game. Hayden Wood already back for the Cats. Roper coming the other way. Wood matching up with him. Roper going inside, putting up the shot, and gets it to fall. At Haskins with the block right there, and that shot still goes down. But that's good defense right there by Peyton Haskins. Moldrew coming the other way. Bledsaw at the scores table. Moldrew, pull up, three. Got knocked down, didn't get the call though, as Roper will come the other way. Roper with it. Gives it up Watson. Watson guarded by Marley. Going inside, putting up the shot, no good. Rebounds his own, puts it up, and foul is called. Don't know on who, though. Probably going to be on Haskins. Yep, Haskins. Hayden did a good job there going up with Pope Pans, you know, on the first shot. Watson inbound on the baseline. Gets it inside, Harrell. Harrell from three, doesn't get it. He started off with the first three and hasn't made one since. Has Harrell. Has Muldrew going inside, weaving through defender. Putting up the shot, no good. Foul is called, and he'll go back to the free throw line for more. He has been at the free throw line a lot tonight. Yeah. 12 points in the ball game, at least half of them coming from the free throw line for Cortland Muldrew. There you go. Yeah, the second quarter a little slower. Still got 2.11 left to play here in the first half. Um, looks like the track meet. Everybody got done with the sprints, and we're slowing it down a little bit. As Muldrew will sink the pair, has not missed a free throw here tonight. That's a jinx. I, well, no, I, I felt like I did it earlier. He just goes right through that. That's how solid he is at the line. Given up, now Sullivan. Gives it down low to Watson. Watson going inside. Muldrew with a good defense. Tries to save it. He does. Saves it to Watson, though, as Watson goes inside, and Bledsaw will pick up the foul. But that's good. Don't give up an easy layup right there. As Watson will go to the line, shooting two for the Mavericks. 34-20, minute 53 left to go in the second quarter. Next week for the Cats, they've got the Fayetteville Bulldogs on Tuesday. That's the current two seed, actually tied for one and two are the Wildcats and the Fayetteville Bulldogs. And that's a homer for the Wildcats. That's a home game. And then the away game against the Springdale Bulldogs. So it's the week of the dogs. Yeah. Next week. Two big matchups. Those have been rivals as long as Harvard's been open. Which I think is in year... 17, I think. 17. Jeez. It was a young school. Yes. And still a lot of good tradition there. Bledsoe going to take a break right there with two fouls. Great ball game for him so far tonight. Did a good job rebounding the ball, has scored a little bit, and that's all you can ask from him is just do what your role is, and he's done it to perfection here tonight. Wood going inside. Pull back mid-range jumper, no good. Marley attempted rebound, but coming away with it is Sullivan. Now Watson with it. Giving it up to Grant. Grant gives it up to Roper. Roper against Muldrew. Now, Grant. Good defense by Mosby. Back to Harrell, he loses the handle, but that's tipped oh. away by the Wildcats. I didn't really see anybody tip it away, though. I saw the tip, but I thought it went down and went off of his knee. As Watson will inbound. Your eyes are apparently better than mine. Well, again, the amber lenses. As going inside is Sullivan, puts up the shot and gets it to fall from two. It's a good shot right there by Sullivan with Marley in his face. Muldrew going downhill, sidestep, mid-range jumper, and offensive foul called on Cortland Muldrew. It's going to be his second. Muldrew with 14 in the ball game so far. Coming off a 30 point performance against the Rogers Heritage War Eagles. Substitution here. 
Colton tucked Disney into the ball game, replacing Mulder with the two fouls. So the Wildcats, eight players deep already right here in the first half. Love to see that. Nine players deep. That's what I was about to count. Forgot about Mosby out there. That's a, not a normal thing for Coach Deffenbaugh either. He likes to stay within a seven-man rotation, if if that. As Wood almost kind of got fouled on that play. but Decapitated. Yes. Menifee gives it to Wood. Wood said, I'm going inside for two and gets it to fall. He was just holding on to his face and then gets the bucket. Still grimacing in a little bit of a pain. Hey, that's the football player in him right there. He took a hard shot to the noggin right there. Kind of checking for blood as Wood. 24 seconds left to play in the second quarter. 36-24 is a 12-point ball game now here in Southside Maverick Arena. 17 seconds left here in the first half. Watson with it. Now eight. Now five. Watson against Wood. Going inside, blocked away, and foul called. I believe they're going to get that on Tuck Disney. No, they're going to give oh, it to Wood. Oh, that's going to be Hayden's third. Third personal on Hayden Wood, who has 16 points in the ball game. I think if there's any more time left in the half here, he'd be getting buzzed in. But with 2.3 left, they're going to leave him in there. As the first free throw good by Watson. Could possibly make it a 10-point game here, which would be the lowest it's been in a while. Lee Prince back in for the Mavericks. 2.3 left to play in the second quarter, 36-25. Watson at the line for another free throw. As they'll sink that one, the Wildcats have the opportunity to get down the court for the last shot. Tuck Disney takes it from half court, Woo! and I thought that might have gone in. I was That was close. Did look good from our angle. It did look good from our angle, as that'll end the first half of action. 36-26, a 10-point lead for the Wildcats going into the halftime break. We'll be right back here with third quarter action on Springdale Athletic Foundation Television Network. Food that is fresh, full of flavor, and all for a good cause can only come from Tacos for Life in Springdale. Enjoy delicious tacos for a cause. When you buy a meal, Tacos for Life donates the proceeds to provide a meal to starving children. Download the Tacos for Life app for ongoing promotions and free food for our friends right here in Springdale. Great food for a great cause. Tacos for Life, 1210 JTL Parkway in Springdale. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot. Because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise. To always keep it real. To always keep it Tyson. Hey Northwest Arkansas, Lara here at Sam's Furniture. If you're looking for new furniture, we have over 170,000 square feet selection at everyday low prices and same day delivery available. But the best part is that we love to serve our community. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many amazing organizations that we have been blessed to partner with. Serving others, especially those in need, is our culture here. And we hope that you'll be a part of that too. Arkansas's largest furniture destination, get it at Sam's. My name is Eric Burnett. I am the Assistant Athletic Director for the Springdale School District. I am so grateful for your donations to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Chris Wood, Assistant Athletic Director of the Springdale School District. It's because of the generosity of people like you, we are able to fully support the Fuel and Feet program. For this, we thank you and appreciate your help. I support the Spring to Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. 
If you need that love, support, somebody to push you, to tell you you can do it, I would tell them to come to Pam Transportation. It's a family here. It's, it's not just a regular company. They will look after you. They will show you that you are important. You are welcome here. What's the only thing better than ordering your Whataburger favorites right on your phone? Earning free Whataburger while doing it. Download the Whataburger app to get started, just like you like it. Jackson Colby, we threw, get to the ball, and one play! Hi, this is Donald Tucker, the voice of the Harbor Wildcats. Are you looking for a new career? Would you like to become a professional truck driver? The CDL Training School in Tawnytown, Arkansas is open and accepting new students. You can earn your CDL in just three short weeks with employment. After you finish school, the PAM Transport will cover your tuition. You will train in the same equipment that you will drive once you earn your CDL. Plus, students also receive a $100 weekly stipend during training. Don't wait another minute. Call PAM Transport today at 888-498-2549. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Jared Park. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Hi, my name is Brett Hobbs. I'm the head football coach at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale Schools Athletics, I want to say thank you. Accidents are never planned, but no matter how small, every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas with fast access, pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. Goodbye, guessing. Hello, confidence. So long, stress. Hello, security. Farewell, running to the bank. Hello, banking from anywhere. Get a quick view of your balance. Lock lost debit cards and quickly deposit checks anywhere, anytime with the highly rated Arvest Go mobile app from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Sometimes a dream car has nothing to do with horsepower or performance. My dream car is the one that gets me to my job every day. The one that lets me help a friend in need. I didn't think I had the credit. My credit score wasn't that good. But CarMart believed in me. They believed in me. My dream car, a 2016 Nissan Sentra. What's yours? 
America's Car Mart. You keep the dream, and we'll keep you on the road. I'm Jason Jones, principal at Springdale High School. Thank you for making an investment into the future of athletics in our community of Springdale. We support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I am Paul Gree, principal at Harbor High School. Without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Springdale School Athletics, I want to say thank you. Arkansans appreciate community. We work and raise families, care for our neighbors, and come together in good times and bad. At First Security, that local strength is what we love best about our home state. There is commitment here, and heart, and hope. Thank you to everyone who is standing together, learning from one another, making Arkansas a place we all love to call home. We're proud to be your community bank. Try the three and three meal at Slim Chickens. Three hand breaded chicken tenders paired with three perfectly fried wings, shaken in your choice of house flavors. Served with fries, Texas toast, and a medium drink. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Hometown, that word still means something here. It means we're neighbors, we do the right thing. We care about your family, and you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps, hometown fresh. Thank you for supporting the Fuel and Feet program. I'm Cassie Lloyd, the head volleyball coach at Harbor High School, and without your help, this program would not be possible. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. My name is Brandi Davis, girls basketball coach at Central Junior High. Thank you for donating to the Fuel and Feet program. I support the Springdale Athletic Foundation because they care about our student athletes. The Fuel and Feed program raises money to help pay for pre-game and post-game meals for kids and coaches. In addition, we raise funds to buy athletic footwear for the students to compete in. I'm Donald Tucker, Executive Director of the Springdale Athletic Foundation. Please take this time to help our students and coaches. Visit the link on the screen to donate now. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. And back to the cheerleaders. Thank you very much. 36-26 our score, a fresh eight on the third quarter clock. As we just heard, someone won $230 and donated it back to the cheerleaders. Yep. I'm, I'm walking away with it. Hey, that's amazing magic. Mavericks with the throw in to start play up here in the second half. I'm walking away. As Grant with the ball. Trying to give it up. Guarded by Marley. Now Harrell. Harrell putting on the moves against Wood. Sends it back Grant. Back to Harrell. Harrell against Wood. Going inside, weaving through, kicked by Conley, and yep, they're going to call a kick ball, but that possession didn't change, so the shot clock does not reset. Thought we had a travel and a kick ball, but we get, at least we got the late whistle there on the kick. They're going to reset it to 15, though. Wasted some time after the kick, so that's yep. probably why. Hoping for an exciting start right here from the Wildcats. Again, our starting five out there to start this second half. They get it to the corner. Harrell off the no-look pass. No good. Wood with the rebound coming the other way. 
Now Conley getting rowed down low. Doesn't get it. And coming the other way are the Mavericks. Now to Sullivan. Sullivan would alter that shot. Big time. Conley coming the other way. The pace already picking up here in the third quarter. Marley back to Conley. Conley fakes the three. Going inside. Two up and good for Jackson Conley. Two layups in a row, or, or efforts uh, by Conley right there. And bang twice on both of them. Could no have calls. Some and ones. And ones are two free throws. And Harrell sends it over to Sullivan. Sullivan looking for a back cutting roper now for Watson, and that one going to go out of bounds. Bledsoe with a good defense down low. Yeah, you feel that first quarter energy. I'm fast paced up and down the court again right here to start the second half. And going to slow it down to the south side Mavericks as they call the timeout, the 30 second timeout, which means we'll stay right here. What's the keys for the Wildcats to kind of put this out of reach? Well, I, I love the team play. I, you know, I can't say it enough how much I love this Wildcat team when we're sharing the love and passing to the open guy. As I, I, I completely agree, I was gotten distracted for a second. But I mean, those Wildcat team when they share the love, there's love to go around. They've all, got enough players where it, it's going to be good enough. Right, all of them can make the open shot. I mean, Bledsoe started off real hot right there to, to start this game off with six points, and he hasn't had any since. Wood with 16, Bledsoe with six, Moldrew with 14, Conley with two. You'd like to see Conley get a little more involved here in the offensive end. And you can see the effort right here, two, two shots. Effort to get the ball to Conley as well, but he gets a steal, pulls up mid right. No, never mind. Oop! To Cortland Muldrew. I thought that was a shot for a second. Yeah. Yeah, great job. Again, team basketball right there. He, he doesn't care that he's only got two points. He's going to throw the oop and let Muldrew give him the slam jam. Thank you, ma'am. As Watson goes up for two, kind of. Change midair. Now Muldrew coming the other way. Going up for two again, and Muldrew gets it to fall. 18 points now for Muldrew as he gets a quick four. Now Trey Grant will bring the ball up for the Mavericks. They look for either Watson or Harrell offensively. All the way to Harrell. Three pointer up, three pointer short. Bledsoe with another rebound. Now Conley. Kind of a blocking foul. They will call it that way. As Conley kind of got altered on his movement. Glad we got the early whistle on that one. I thought we were going to miss that one again. I feel like he's been beat up. Him and Wood both have been taking some shots in this game. As Wood will inbound. Wood trying to throw it into Muldrew. Muldrew gets the foul called on Watson. That might be an Emmy right there for that right there. <laughs> As we've got an injury, that's Conley with the injury. We couldn't see it because in the position that we're in, but Lauren Ward had to come out to the court. Trying to see what he's holding. That might just be a win thing. I don't see. Oh, maybe he is grabbing that left ankle. Hate to speculate up here on any injuries. Conley is up. Not a good sight to see if you're the Wildcats. Nope. We got a big week coming up. Bulldogs and Bulldogs next week. The purple and the red. As Connor Minifee will sub into the ball game for the Harbor Wildcats. Conley will go to the training room. Wood Danbound gets inside. Bledsaw wide open mid-range jumper. Doesn't get it to fall, but you like to see that shot by him. As Muldrew will dribble it out and reset it after the reset shot clock. Menifee keeping the ball alive right there. I love to see that. Right in off the bench, making an impact in the game. Muldrew. And a foul is called. I like it. Looks like the refs are tightening up a little bit. I thought they were letting it get a little rough there oh, no, to they start the second an, half. They called an offensive. Wow. Wow, they called an offensive on Cortland Muldrew. That'll be his... Second, or no, third personal foul. Interesting, as Grant comes the other way. Looking for Watson. He kind of set a double screen for a Roper on the other side. Three, up three, good. As Mulder will come the other way. He's guarded by Sullivan. 
Reading the screen from Bledsaw, going downhill, sends it to the corner to Menifee. Back to Muldrew. Fakes the three. Going inside, weaving through the defenders, putting up the shot under contest, doesn't get it. And a jump ball call, the possession arrow should favor the Wildcats. Good job by Bledsaw getting up for that rebound and creating the jump ball. Wood to inbound. Back to Wood. Wood going inside. Sending back out Mulder. Mulder fakes the three. Floater up short. Rebounds his own shot. Puts it back up and good. Cortland Mulder not going to be deterred when it comes to being at the rim. He's done that a few times tonight where he's missed a little layup. He gets his own rebound and puts it back up. You love to see the aggressiveness. Over to Harrell. Harrell against Menifee. Back out Grant. As he steps out of bounds, and that'll go the other way. 44-29, a 15-point lead for the Wildcats here in Southside Maverick Arena. Connor Menifee with great defense right there to get him to, to chase down the baseline right there. Menifee with it. Sends it back Wood. Wood, three, up three, good. Hayden Wood, 19 in the ball game. He's... He's fighting with Muldrew for leading scorer, 19 and 20 for both of those players. That's a three good by Roper. He's got two threes already in this quarter. As Menifee gives it back to Muldrew. Muldrew gets the screen from Wood. Now another flare screen for Wood. Bledsaw slips off of it, gives it inside Marley. Marley for the layup and good. And the Wildcats sharing the love on that play. Yeah, unselfish pass right there. He could have forced that shot in into a double team. Down low, Harrell sends it back up Grant. Now Roper. Roper's hit last two threes for the Mavericks. Shoots another. Back of the rim, no good. And now Wood with it. Coming down the court for the Wildcats. Pulling up for three. Gets it to fall. Hayden Wood is on fire tonight for the Wildcats. And Conley is back in the game. I'll tell you, Hayden Wood, he does it so effortless looking. I mean, he just so nonchalant. Jackson Conley returning for the Wildcats. A very good sign to see he's walking on his own accord. Could have been a cramp. Again, yo, even the way you said that, I saw him stretching that out a little bit. Very well could have been. The least minor thing that, it, or the least, yeah, least minor thing it could be. And that's what we're hoping it is. As Jackson Conley back out on the floor. Watson with it. Picks up his dribble, now gives it up Pr Prince. Prince, Conley saying, give me the foul, and nope, he, he's not liking it. I do feel like that's cramping up, because you can see right there, he was asking the ref there, hey, hey, hey. So let's see if he goes over there and gets stretched out a little bit. That's gonna make me feel a lot better if that's the case. as the Mavericks will inbound. Lauren Ward, an amazing trainer for the Wildcats. You gotta give her a lot of credit. She does so much for this Wildcat, uh, for all Wildcat uh, athletics. Going inside is Sullivan. Sends it down low, Watson. Watson, no good, rebounds his own shot, puts it back up and gets it to fall. Yeah, we were talking at halftime between us about coaches and the hours they have to put in, but I'm telling you, Lauren Ward puts in the time with these athletes, making sure they're ready to play. The other day I had a knee problem. I went to Lauren and she got me fixed. So even athlete, even former athletes, as I was an athlete my sophomore year, as that one missed by Muldrew. Roper coming the other way, going inside against Bledsaw and Wood and blocked away by Bledsaw. Roper faking the three. Gives it up. Now Prince. Prince from three. No good. Rebounded by Menifee. Menifee trying to maintain it. He was fouled on the play by Roper. Hey, and just like that, we're up to an 18-point ball game right here with 2.09 left to play in the third quarter. Felt like it was getting a little bit close. And one of the things I've kind of been wanting to mention was, is I'd forgotten how well that I thought Southside moved the basketball from side to side, in and out, at the home game. And they're doing that again here tonight. Doing a good job of it, as the Wildcats are doing a good job of sharing the love here tonight, as we've said multiple times. As Wood with 22, Mulder with 20. 
Mulder going inside, weaving through the defenders, putting up the shot, no good, rebounds his own, puts it back up, blocked by Watson. Bledsoe the rebound, and Marley with the ball. Now Marley fakes the three, gives it up, Mulder. Mulder going inside, sends it out, Menifee, three, up three, good! Connor Menifee gets on the board for the Wildcats. Cannot tell you how much I love that play right there. That play just ever, I mean, it seemed like everyone on the court touched the ball there for the Wildcats. And again, it's a good drive. You get double or triple team, you kick it out to an open shooter. We've got them all through this team. As that one blocks basically into the goal by Prince. Now Wood pulls from three. He's feeling it and short. As Prince with the rebound coming the other way. Minute and five with the play in the third quarter. Prince gives it out Sullivan. Now to Watson. Watson against Muldrew, pulls from three, short. Harold with the rebound, blocked away by, or stolen away by Wood, but out of bounds. 20 se or 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout, we'll say right here, the Wildcats created a little separation. They're up by 19 against the Southside Mavericks. And really it's what we said all night. They've been just sharing the basketball very well, getting some balanced scoring approach, and that has been their key to success tonight. Yeah. And lots of substitutions. I can see Peyton Askins set to come in right here as we kick play back up after this timeout. Oh, we got Mosby coming back in too. That's a good sign for the Wildcats. You like to see Coach Jeff Ma kind of try out these new lineups, try out these new players, because when it comes to playoff time, and when it comes really, we said for the girls team that it was going to be a good preview of playoffs to come next week. It's going to be a great preview for the Wildcat team men's just next week as well. Right, and that's a lot of games in a short period of time, something that they haven't done other than like Christmas tournaments and stuff like that. So they're going to need to go eight or nine deep. It is going to come down to that. State tournament is a different beast when it comes to conditioning as well as just you're playing pretty much one-day separations. So that's that's game planning as well. Coach Deffenbaugh has to ramp up his game planning as Roper Coming around the screen, sends it back Watson. Watson pulling from three, doesn't get it short. As Wood coming the other way. Wood over to Mosby. Back to Menifee. Over to Wood. Wood with the spin move, sending it. Oh, puts it back up, gets his own rebound, puts it up again. Rebounds again, and Hayden Wood being a little flashy right now for the Wildcats. Yeah, two offensive rebounds in a basket on one possession. He kind of got stuck with his back to the basket, threw it up, got his own rebound, and finished for the Wildcats. As Watson with it. Eight seconds. Now five. Watson back door to Sullivan, and a jump ball call. The position error will favor the Mavericks with 1.7 left to play in the third quarter. I was nervous we were going to pick up our fourth foul right there. Going to be Maverick possession, so we got 1.7 seconds. That's time to dribble and shoot. They throw it into Watson, and he gets the lay or the alley oop. Cooper Watson with the basket, 38-57, a 19-point lead for the Wildcats going into the fourth quarter with a fresh eight. We'll be right back here with a fresh voice, I hope, after this quick commercial break. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, post to post, from downtown to way out of town, to connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from our best bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Welcome back. The score 57 38. And we look at the girls' score real quick. I just saw this st stat. Four players again, all four players in double digits. You got MacArthur, Mattis Campbell, McKinley Campbell, and Delaney Roller all scoring in double digits here tonight for the South against the Southside Mavericks. That's a good stat. 
as now we get to the men's action. Hayden Wood is subbed out of the ballgame. Muldrew back in. Menifee wide open three. Up and good. Connor Menifee is a knockdown three-point shooter for the Wildcats. Yeah, I mean, if you pass him and he's open, he'll get set and make the shot. Back-to-back -back threes for him. The senior, one of two seniors on this team. Austin Reisinger, the other one. As Muldrew with the steal coming the other way. Sends it over Haskins. Haskins inside for two. Doesn't get it to fall. Rebounds his own shot. Puts it back up and good. The Wildcats putting on the scoring here early in the fourth quarter. Good effort. You got to want it to get it back like that. And another good shot by Peyton Haskins. A 24-point lead now for the Wildcats. Roper inside. Sends it over to Sullivan. Inside to Watson for two. And Mavericks have stayed with it a little bit. They've answered a lot of possessions. They might be down by 22, but... They've answered a lot of times. Yeah. Like I said, their ball movement is amazing. We've seen some real highlight passes from them. Muldrew, fadeaway jumper, good. And Muldrew, he's a human highlight reel when it comes to scoring the ball. Yeah. I mean, Jabron Sullivan in his grill right there, and he still gets his shot off over him. Going inside is Prince. No good. Haskins with the rebound. Sends it to Muldrew. Muldrew with 22 in the ball game. Faking the three, getting it back from Haskins, going inside. Kind of gets bumped on the play. And now Harrell. Harrell against Menifee, puts up the shot and good. Mosby. As Deffenbaugh gets out on the court. Muldrew and Watson in a little, in a little talking back and forth right there. Coach Deffenbaugh out on the court. He didn't want to see anything bad happen there, so I don't blame him right there. He's going to get a technical for coming on the court, but I think he did the right thing there because there was words being exchanged, and I don't think they, they were giving each other their Snapchats. <laughs> Fourth personal. Or no, they gave they gave a double technical. Okay. To Cooper I, Watson and... No, they definitely gave... I know they gave one to Muldrew because they just said he got his fourth foul. Yeah, Okay. Deffenbaugh probably would have liked to get the technical right there instead of Muldrew getting his fourth foul. Right. Well, the refs are going to talk about it right now here, and we're going to decide. I think it's definitely a technical. But will it be a double technical when both teams get free throws? Uh, no, if it's a double technical, they're supposed to cancel out. Right. So I'm thinking it is going to be here. It may be a double technical on us because Deffenbaugh may have got one and Muldrew. Nope. We're going to go offsetters. Here we go. Yep. Double technical, and that will offset. As Watson and Muldrew both get one, but that is more costly for the Wildcats and the fact that Muldrew picks up his fourth personal foul. And that's a that's a great move by Defabod. Like I said, I was worried he was going to get the technical for coming on the court, but he stopped an interaction there that could have got out of control. Yep, they announced double technicals. All right, double technical is going to be a jump ball. So possession arrow next time is going to go to the Wildcats. Three up, no good. Rebounded by Prince. He puts it up, and the and one play for Prince. Lee Prince the third is what they just said. So Again, they've only gone six deep tonight. They've only played six players. Bledsaw is going to be back in for the Wildcats. See another sub come off the bench. They're not going deeper than that. Yeah, that's it. They played six players tonight. Back in Trey Grant. He he's took a long sit down right there. As Prince misses the free throw, Wood with the rebound now to Mosby. Mosby coming on the screen from Blood Saw sends it out Menifee. Menifee guarded by Grant. Coming around, it sends it to Bledsaw. Bledsaw over to Wood. Wood coming around the screen. Wood putting on the moves. Pull up, mid-range jumper. Back of the iron, no good. Rebounded by no one. And Wood with a steal going up for two, and he's fouled on the play. Daffenbaugh almost came on the court again. He was ready to go. Some words exchanged as well again been some hard fouls in this game right here and you hate to see that we're right here at the end of the season it's a 20 point ball game you hope everybody gets under control here getting a little chippy here in the barn 
And I see it from Wood. I mean, he took a hard shot. I literally almost decapitated in that second quarter. As Wood will sink the free throw, he's got 25 in the ball game. That might be a season high for Wood. I'd have to check. I'm not going to verify that for sure. Don't take my word on it, but that might be a season high for him. I've said all year he could average 25 for any other team in the 6A West. He's got 26 here tonight. And I agree with that statement that you just made. 66-44, our score, a 22-point lead for the Wildcats here in the fourth quarter. Outside Grant. Going inside, sends it back out to Harold. Harold out to Prince. Prince inside to War Watson, and Watson oh, gets the bucket. As now Wood will bring it across. Gives it up Marley. And a foul called initially on the ground. Prince will pick that one up. Again, the Wildcats putting on an impressive, well-balanced performance, even without Jabari Washington. We saw a little more well-balanced when Washington was in the lineup because you had four all-out scores on the court at once. Right. Even five, actually. Um, but now they've kind of been balanced tonight. Wood has been the answer for this Wildcat team, though, tonight. 28 now. And I love it. We've got um, Maldrew and Jackson. As Prince Ooh. pulls for three. On the bench, we're still passing the rock around and still getting good baskets. Wood against Roper. Getting the screen from Minifee. Back to Minifee. Three up three. Good. He's three for three tonight. Nine points for Connor Minifee. He's had a good performance tonight as well. On defense as well. Not just the three points, but he's playing great defense tonight. Looks like they maybe counted one of his threes at two earlier. He's got eight on the board, but I've got, I mean, I've got him probably a nine. But that one called a traveling violation. He'll go the other way, the Wildcat way. 71-50, a 21-point lead for the Wildcats with 4.16 left to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, no, that scoreboard has to be wrong because I've seen the hands go up on all three of those shots. As T.D. Mosby with the ball. Looking for Wood, posting up against Roper. Fade away, mid-range jumper, good! Hayden Wood has not been able to be stopped tonight. He's got yep. 30. He's heating up, he's on fire. As Roper now with it. He's got the size advantage as well. We talked about it in the pregame. He has, this, the guards have the size advantage. Thought that defense by Mosby right there would cause the travel, but they give him the layup right there. As Wood with it against Roper. Now against Grant, putting on the moves. Sending over Marley. Marley has tried with that mid-range jumper a lot tonight. Wonder if he was going to go back to it. Gives it back to Menifee. He'll pull from three again. Can he get 12? No. Back of the rim, no good. 3.24 left to play in the fourth quarter. Menifee has three for four from the three-point line tonight. That is, if you're wondering, 75%. Quick math. Woo! Thought that might be a good block right there by Bledsaw. Again, I'm looking up there at the scoreboard. It's huge, and you can't miss it. But Marley, two points tonight. I mean, and we're still at 73 points tonight for the Harbor Wildcats. So, again, That's showing that we have more weapons than, than a lot of than a credit is given. Yes. A lot of people don't give credit to the depth of the Wildcats. They give credit to the top three to four. And, really, the depth of the Wildcats is there as well. Yeah, and it's on display. And here we go. Looks like the Mavs are going to empty up their bench right here. So we're finally going to get some subs in. As Mosby with the ball. Gives it up Marley. Marley going down low. Sends it to Menifee. Over to Wood. Swing pass three. Up good. Hayden Wood, 33 in the ball game. He got the foul there too, I thought. He should have. He got hit on the arm as well. That could have been the old-fashioned four-point play. Hayden Wood has been electric tonight from three-point territory. Exciting. Here comes the bench for the Wildcats, it looks like. Hayden bummed. He's feeling it. He's like, hey, I'm on fire. Why am I coming out? <laughs> because there's something called sportsmanship. Yes. Colt Tuck Disney in here for the Wildcats. 2.57 left to play here in the fourth quarter. 76-52. Going inside is Prince. He puts up the shot and will be fouled on the play. Bledsaw is going to pick up another one right here. It's going to be his fourth. 
Bledsoe with a good night as well. He's got six points and probably a lot of rebounds. Javion Phillips, Austin Reisinger will be coming into the game soon. That means starters all on the bench. I'm looking at them over there. There's a lot of smiles going on. You love to see that. They're excited for their buddies. They're excited for their team. And that's what's going to help this Wildcat team get through these playoffs is team. Agreed. As Prince misses that free throw, Menifee with the rebound. And Menifee had a great, has had a great night tonight. Nine points for him off the bench in limited minutes as well. As Phillips with it. Beckham Crone going to the line or to the scores table. Has that one missed? Pull up three, rims out. And Colton Tuck Disney with the ball. 2.22 left to play in the fourth quarter. Tuck Disney with it. Pull up, mid range, or er, three, I should say. No good. Rebounded by the Mavericks. Coming the other way is Prince. Putting on the moves, going inside. Against Menifee, putting up the shot and fouled on the play is Prince. Good hard defense here by the Wildcats. Doesn't matter what the score is or how much time's left, playing some good defense down here on this end of the court. Looks like Menifee will be the one to sub out. As Prince will miss the first free throw. Prone into the game. Emmett Blevins also going to the scores table. Wondering who they're going to pull out for that. Now in the game for armor number 22, Emmett Blevins. They're going to pull out T.D. Mosby, who has gotten some solid minutes here tonight. Yeah, right. Got him early, too. I mean, first half minutes which is probably the first time all year he's seen those, especially in conference play, what I watch. I haven't seen him sub in the first half yet. I know if we were at home right now, the crowd would be going crazy for Reisinger, so I hope he gets a touch right here. Reisinger inside to Blevins. Blevins putting on the moves. Up, in, no good. Rebounded by the Mavericks. Now Prince with it. Over to Bunda. Outside. Putting on the moves is Flake. To the corner to Prince. Three up three. Good. Prince has put on a little bit of scoring here in the fourth quarter. As he'll come out of the ball game. 76-56, a 20-point lead for the Wildcats here in the barn. A minute and 20 left to play in the fourth. I like that one. I like the jungle over at Bentonville. I like the barn over here. Tuck Disney inside, putting up the shot. Doesn't get it, but it will be fouled on the play. I'd like to see his aggressiveness right there. These guys getting some minutes, trying to take some shots. That's going to put Dis Tuck Disney at the line, shooting two. Minute eight left to play as Tuck Disney will sink the first. Get another and sink the pair, making it a 22 point ball game. Coach Deffenbaugh saying, do not, do not foul. Going inside, stolen away by Javion Phillips. Over to Reisinger. Going inside for two, he puts it up and gets it to fall. Austin Reisinger with the basket. Love to see that. One of our two seniors right there getting a bucket right here. Both seniors scoring in this ball game. Reisinger with two, Menifee with nine. Up and in for the Mavericks. Don't even have that player listed on my. Deep into the bench, ain't they? Yeah, I don't even have that player listed on my roster. Shot clock's off. Looks like we're determined just to dribble this out. Tuck Disney will dribble it out for the Cats. 
Going to put him at the line again. That one, I don't know. That's the fifth team foul. That's Tuck Disney at the line. Looking to add some salt to the wound is Disney. Pretty, pretty shot right there. Eighty-one fifty-eight, and a twenty-four point lead for the Wildcats. The Mavericks probably going to dribble this one out. Nope, they're going to pull. And they make it. Nope. You see the crowd. I love it that the crowd goes crazy for these guys who don't get to play a lot, even if they're wearing those Maverick jerseys. 21-point win for the Wildcats. Up next for this Wildcat squad is the Fayetteville Bulldogs. We'll show that little graphic coming up yet. Yeah, the Fayetteville Bulldogs, February 20th of 2024, can't believe it's 2024 already. And then your end of game sponsors brought to you by Springdale Athletic Foundation. Slim Chickens. Trade Pro. United Federal Credit Union. Tacos for Life. Storm Sudorski Orthodontics. And that'll do it for us tonight on behalf of Mr. Jared Park, I'm Connor Jenkins. On behalf of Dr. Jared Cleveland, Donald Tucker, we thank you and have a good night. We'll see you next time. Jackson Coley, we through, get to the ball!